And good morning. How's everybody doing today? Sorry for switching the streams up on you. Um, as I mentioned before, my wife had a conference up in Virginia. I live in North Carolina. Uh, my wife had a conference up in Virginia. She was originally going to go up the night before and stay at my brother's place. And then everything went crazy there, so that didn't happen. So I wound up doing about a 10-hour drive on the road to take her up. Hey, good morning, Chewy. How are you doing? Thank you for joining me today. How are you doing this morning, Cherry? Got anything going on today? So, oh yeah, yeah. So that's what happened yesterday. And then the next two Saturdays, um, I'm tied up with the hunting mentoring group that I'm part of. So, that going on, I'll be out on Saturday pretty much all day, both days. So my plan is to stream Sundays for the next, this week and the next two weeks and back to Saturday. Unless everybody likes Sundays better, my metrics. Got it. I am going to be living off of coffee and water today, so. Dad and Prince not coming out, and in law. Oh, I, I know how that goes. So I got home last night. I had everything set to finally run Input Shaper on all of my printers. So you may remember me telling you before I was going to make the, uh, the dongle here. So I had it in a pigtail. And the problem with the pigtail is that works great, but you have to have access to the um, Raspberry Pi GPI open or have a some type of extender come out that you can plug in. Well, the problem with that is Red Dragon, the switch wire right here, is running a Big Tree Tech Manta M4P with a CB1 mod. And Mercury Rising, which is downstairs, is running the Manta M8P with a, um, a CB1 module. Well, the CB1 modules, um, the GPIO pinouts are slightly different, which means where I had a cube connector that I could just put straight on a Raspberry Pi, it would not work the same way on the CB1 module printers. And so I went ahead and did the um, PyPico um, conversion. So in this case, what you do is you hardwire your ADXL to a Raspberry Pi Pico, and then you drop clipper on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So this does all the input shaping work and then sends it via the USP to the main controller. So the nice thing about that is if your main controller happens to be a Raspberry Pi A or Raspberry Pi B or even a 2B, I don't think any of those can actually do um, input shaping. And the Raspberry Pi 0 or 0 W can't either. So this way it's just plug and play. And the only thing you need to remember to do is um, comment out or comment in uh, a single line in your printer.cfg file. Because I set mine up uh, and put all the input shaping configs in an input shaper.cfg file. So plug in this, because if this is not plugged in, and you uncomment and do a restart on with the 
include input shaper.cfg file, it will not come up because it, it can't find this um, MCU. Right, so you have to do that. But the nice thing is, is once you have that set up on all your systems, it's a matter of plugging this in, getting your ADXL mounted as appropriate on your specific printer, pull and what have you, and then uncommenting that line, do a restart, do a home, and then run your ADXL. So, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I, I haven't even set up a macro yet, but you can set up a macro that will run the input shaping commands and then go from there. So I did input shaper on Mercury Rising downstairs last night when I got home from Virginia and loaded up some Polymaker Bronze PLA, which I had just gotten in the mail yesterday. So it was sitting on the front porch when I got there. And started a print on Mercury Rising, watched the first layer go down, and went to bed. Um, oh, yeah, the, yeah, that dongle is going to be like hanging right over there on the SCADIS panel. Um, so, anyhow, on Mercury Rising, let me uh, pull that up. What I noticed when I got up this morning was I was having layers that weren't in here. And as soon as I bent down and took a look, I realized what had happened was my bed, instead of being level, had kicked down on the right-hand front corner. So something was, was binding, and I couldn't figure it out. I double-checked. All the screws were good, so there wasn't anything loose. And the only thing that I could think of was that the... So their PTFE-coded... Um, uh, Ball, or not ball screws, lead screws, right? And so I noticed that the coating was starting to come off on a couple of them, and I was like, okay, I haven't run it for that long. Um, that tells me that maybe there's a little bit of binding and wear going on. So um, I got it all sorted, dropped the bed um, 100 millimeters because I haven't done any prints really longer than that, and added some uh etfe based lubricant uh an, an oil not a uh you know not super lube or anything three and one ptfe to those rods ran you know brought the bed up and down the, that 100 millimeters a couple of times to get it distributed well and as you can see right now that print is starting so we'll keep an eye on that throughout the day as it was sliced um, I am using the organic supports, but this is a, um, the same master team. It is a Warhammer, uh, 40,000 chaplain's helmet. And so this is the base helmet. There's eight to 10 parts that I also have to print that will go on, uh, the helmet itself to finish it out. Um, yeah, got, got them cleaned out, you know, brushed them off with the, uh, brass bristle brush, and then went ahead and added some lubricant so that it'll hopefully run a little bit better. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I actually have the door, um, normally the door to my office is closed so that my wife can do whatever she wants. Uh, so she's not here. You have that door opening. Start hearing something. Yep, yep, I will. Um, but yeah, and I mean those those PTFE based rods, they work really, really well, um, and they will take a little bit to let them break in. So, um, hey, Drat Snap, uh, Hada, and Alicidra. See that you're in chat. So just hang it out. Thank you for being here on a Sunday morning. Um, so with that being said, 
Um, I meant to grab a couple of boxes that came in. So if you can give me one second, um, what I'm gonna do is go to the Be Right Back screen and I'll be right back because I did want to grab these boxes and have them at least available to show off stream when some people show up. And right now they're downstairs. So give me one second and I will be right back. All right, and we're back. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to grab a, a couple of boxes and have them ready. Yeah, so the project for today is the Rolahan uh, Rook Mark I. And for those of you that are not familiar, um, this is a 3D printer that has, uh, I don't want to say taken it by storm, but it is definitely showing up on several people's radars these days. If you follow Zombie Hedgehog, I think he's built one or two of these on the stream. Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, I, my plan right now is to just go with the 120 um, and do that one. Um, I believe the 180 is not that much harder to do, um, but I have all the parts because I started to build a Rook 1. Uh, or, uh, yeah, the Rook originally. Um, real fast. Yeah, so I started building a Rook before and had a lot of the stuff put together frame-wise. And then they started heavily modding it really fast. And so I, I had it waiting was just sitting there. Um, and now what I've got is the basic Rook frame. Um, and then a plethora of mods. So I believe this is the, uh, maybe the tough mod or something like that from Gulsifer, um, which will add a little more rigidity to this once you start putting everything together. Um, I did do a base plate because I'm gonna run a Big Tree Tech SKR Pico and either a, so the Pico will go on this side and then either a Raspberry Pi Zero or um, I have a, what is a Banana Pi um, on its way on the slow book from China. So if that gets here, we'll try and go with that and see how easy or hard that one is to 
get up and running. Um, but if not, I've got two or three Raspberry Pi Zeros, um, which will work just fine for this. Um, it's not really huge or complicated. Um, I did go with the Gulsifer, um, basically the whole Gulsifer top um, and the bed, which allows for the clamping of the bearings, which will help a lot with tensioning them and getting those on well. Yeah, Chewy, like I said, I've got a um, the small form factor of it, the Raspberry Pi um, W, but I also got the Raspberry, or excuse me, the orange, I believe it was the orange Pi. The Banana Pi M20 is what I have coming. Um, so it's the same form factor as the, um, the Raspberry Pi Zero. So the as you can see, the color scheme that we're going to work with here is black and gold. Um, I did do the ZN Stop mod as well, so I will just use the standard Creality N Stop for this. Just easier. I can got cables I can just plug right in rather than having to um, figure everything out as we go. But yes, it will be a black and gold build. That's what we'll be working on today is getting that set up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I know the orange pies are a little bit stronger. In fact, the reason I went with the banana pie is I believe this one is also a lot stronger um, processor-wise than the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. Um, so, yeah, it's just a matter of I don't think I can just go and just drop Raspbian on it, you know, a standard Raspberry Pi image and go, so I have to play with it when it gets here. Yeah, and I was really looking for the same form factor because that'll gotta go with the mount and not about doing anything strange. So I will be disassembling this and reusing you know the, the parts over on the new frame, so that's why this is sitting here. Um, these were um, I believe, are these honey rails? Maybe not. I'll have to not mark this on the badger. I can't remember what the rails were. Um, but on this one, you'll see here, this one used heat set inserts. And the Mark 1, I haven't seen a mod yet for the heat set inserts. I believe it's all just threaded straight into, into the plastic. Um, and uses regular M3 nuts. So we'll be using the nuts and the um, and the through bolts in order to get this going. And I believe in the order of operation, you start off on the base and install your um, feet first because it's just easier to move around and then you basically build the bottom up. Because once you have your feet on, then you can set it down uh, and have it upright. The axis motor mount. Um, the other thing is I'm going to use a hodgepodge of motors, keeping with the whole Rook theme, which is um, 
designed and built based on things that you already have on the bench today to keep the cost down. So um, I have a collection. I've got two different um, Ender 3 motors, and the pulleys are at different heights. So we'll see if those work. Hopefully they do. And then boom, it's rather easy. We don't have to work with anything else. Otherwise, I do have a um, uh, ear puller that I can use to pull these two pulleys because these are um, press fit pulleys. There is no flat edge on this. I'd also have to put flats on it. Then this is a LDO stepper motor um, that's actually designed for a Prusa. It was on one of my Prusa builds. Um, it was failing. I wound up opening the um, opening the motor up and finding that it was the bearings. Um, one of the bearings, I can't remember if it's the top or bottom bearing, that holds the rotating uh, part in place, had started going chunky. So I tossed that out, put new bearings in it. The motor works just fine. I repaired, I think. Yeah, two two different uh, Z motor, two different Y motors on my Prusas doing that. And then the plan right now, I've got multiple um, Ender 3 extruder motors. Um, the plan is right now to potentially use this motor. This is a smaller, thinner pancake type motor. Um, it is a Shenyang motor. Um, this is a Focus Odin F5 extruder motor. This thing, is, I, I will say, is like gold because you cannot find this size motor anywhere. I tried LDO. I tried straight up eBay, Google searches. And the reason that you needed this particular motor, if you wanted to, place the extruder on the Odin F5 is because of the shroud that goes over. If you use a, a different motor, it's going to be a little bit thicker. And then you've got the uh, tool head circuit board that mounts to the back of it. And then you have a shroud that slides over it. Well, if you use this motor, um, or if you use a different motor, it's going to be too thick and the shroud won't fit unless you modify the and cooling so Solval has these motors chewy that is very very good to know um, if they have them stocked somewhere in the US because I could not find these I had to order one specifically through Dora um, with focus and it took almost six weeks for it to come in on the slow boat from China so just something to be cognizant of and um, I, I was able to repair this motor. The issue was uh, once I opened it up, the internal wiring, one of the phases was physically soldered um, to ground. They, they put too much solder on it and it soldered over to ground. So that was, that was the issue. Um, and then for the Rook, um, I have a couple of standard um, reality hot ends, but I'm finding that with the Rookery, which is what I'm going to put on here, that the heat block is too big for between these two fans, and I can't get it seated in there. So I do have a Revo CR edition inbound um, i did order that from e3d directly so it may take a while to get here so if anything i may go ahead and just order it from a local vendor but i had a, a 20 percent off coupon for e3d so i figured might as well order something so we'll see how that gets here yeah with that and I believe we're going to get started here. Um, so the back over to the browser for a second. So all of the files are available on Rolohan's 
uh, GitHub page, the Rook. Um, now, what he said was that the Rook Mark I files are now static from him. The Rook Mark I base files will not change. There are a lot of community mods. As I've mentioned I'm using a lot of them. I will be using the Gulsifer um, bed carriage, the Gulsifer XY, basically the whole gantry top end. Um, is going to be the golf first stuff because it's stronger. Don't expect this to be a speed daemon. I know um, Zombie Hedgehog is running his pretty quick, um, but I I tend to go for prints that will finish and be good versus let's just bang this out. I mean, if I am doing a prototype draft. Then yeah, I, I will push the speeds and just get her done. But okay, what's that, Chewy? The forty-two forty and the forty-two thirty-four NEMA seventeens. Done a what? Yeah, like I said, at this point, I'm, I am going to go with some of those Corrality motors. Hopefully, they work if they don't. Um, yeah, with, with the size of this printer um, and the fact that I do not plan on enclosing it, though, it with the size of it, I mean, I've got probably a bunch of Amazon boxes that will easily cover this thing and, and be able to enclose it if I'm going to run anything. Um, you know, that needed heat or fast. But this is probably just going to be a standard PLA printer. Yeah, and all plastic. Well, and that's the other thing, too. This is all plastic, and it is all printed in PLA per the standard Rook guide using the standard Rook settings. So, yeah, it's not going to be, this particular printer will not be a um you know a high temp printer most it'll do pla and if i do you know i'll probably get a v0 bed and heater from west 3d kv3 somebody might be an ldo on them so who knows i'll get it from somewhere um and add it to it so i will have a bed heater on this something um so yeah th this is the end goal right here um it does show having the a uh, blower fan um i do have the fans and i just realized i did not print the parts for that cooling fan so I would have to um, print those, but that's that's not hard to do. Um, just to add some additional cooling, or I may not even need it with the rookery because this I did print out the 4010 rookery. So I'll have a 4010 on the front and dual 4010 blowers on the on the uh, sides for cooling. So we'll go ahead and see if that works. And if that's great, awesome. If not, then I'll print out the uh, the secondary fan. And that'll be a 120 blower fan that'll provide skirt cooling, basically. So, hey, Royal Nomi, how are you doing this morning, dear? Hope you are doing good. It's not too early on a Sunday morning for you. We've just been chit-chatting and going over uh, the build that we're getting ready to do, which is going to be the Bolohan Rook Mark I. 
And my plan is to use the standard feet, the base and top frame. And then I have printed out the Gulsifer, um, basically the motor mounts, the idlers, and the XY joints, because they'll be a little bit stiffer. Um, I also plan on installing a rookery for the hot end mount, and that will, um, let me switch back over here. So this will be the hot end mount and fan shroud. So it'll give me a 4010 in the front and then a 4010 blower fan on each side for part cooling. And so this should give us plenty of part cooling without having to run the skirt fan. And if I do get into, you know, let me do crazy fast speed benches on this or something, I can always add the skirt fan. Um, I'm also going to use the Z uh, end stop, and this will allow me to use a standard Creality end stop, which I've got plenty of them. Um, the X and Y will be sensorless homing. And yeah, I'm just going to reuse a selection of Creality motors. Um, the two metal ones are Creality motors. The one here on the end is a Focus extruder motor. We'll use for the extruder, or I've got, I don't know, four or five Creality extruder motors. And then the bigger one down here at the end is going to be for the Z axis, the belted Z. And this is actually a motor from LDO that. For a Prusa Mark III uh, Y axis. So it, it should have plenty of speed and torque for it. Yeah, the, and I went for the 4010. I mean, I had plenty of 3010 stuff, but I was like, I might as well use the 4010s. Um, and when I was up in Virginia on my way back, it was a very, very short side trip to hit micro center, um, which I, I will say I was extremely, extremely impressed with myself because I left micro center with just two 4010 blower fans. No new printers, no new, no new parts and boards. They did have some, uh, SKR three easy boards that I was looking at and I was like, no, hold off. You don't need it for this build. Just hold off. Um, and yeah, it's the inland PLA. And I mean, they had various inland filament. Um, they had some IC 3d recycled pet G and a little bit of protopasta. And quite honestly, I didn't even look at the protopasta to see if they had any good colors and their their resin was all inland resin and i mean i was like oh inland gray got four kilos of gray already i don't need more gray none of the other stuff so, eh. and then of course i went by and looked at the raspberry pi stuff which they had all the accessories for raspberry pi just no raspberry pies and why they have not started stocking like any of the radsa or orange pie or banana pie or mango pie um, equipment, I don't know. But yeah, sure, I got out of there for like under $10. It was really weird. Though I did run into um, a young man and his mother and was talking with them out there and I don't know, during the course of sitting there talking to him, she may have bought a, a Solval SV-06 for him. I, I don't know. It, it, funny things happen like that when you just talk to people. Uh, so Royal Nomi, what you're seeing in the bottom left-hand corner down there is Mercury Rising. Um, I got home last night from taking my wife up to Virginia. You know, 10-hour round trip. It was a wonderful day. Um, and the 10 hour round trip ended up in Crystal City, Virginia, which is the beltway for, and, and near the Pentagon and things like that. 
the traffic sucked. Um, road rage kicked in, so that was the other part of the side trip to Micro Center was to calm down before I'm back on the road. Um, yeah, and, and Chewy, the other side of that is orange pie, banana pie, mango pie. Um, it, it's more of the board quality. Hey, Westry, it's more of the board quality and whether or not there's a company actually standing behind the product. Because with a raspberry pie, they ship with the same chip on every board. Like if you're going to get a Raspberry Pi 3B version 1.2, it doesn't matter if you bought one over the last five years, they're all going to say, have the same board, right? Um, the components on the, the orange pie, the mango pie, and all these, they change. And therefore, support changes from board to board. So that may be another reason why Micro Center doesn't want to stock them. I don't know. Yeah, well, and Royal Nomi, the, normally I would go up to my brother's house. If I'm up at my brother's house for a couple of days, um, the trip over to Fairfax, Virginia to go to the micro center is only like another hour. So it's not bad. But when you're doing a five hour each way trip to, to drop your spouse off for a conference, and then I have to go and do the same thing on Tuesday or Wednesday to go pick her up. Um, yeah, side trips are authorized at that point. Um, and she was even shocked that I spent the little time that I did and only walked out with two fans. And, like normally I make a, a annual pilgrimage to uh, Micro Center to buy upgrades for the computer and just spend an hour or so just pulling over the 3D printer stuff and the Raspberry Pi stuff. Yes, so what's printing over there is on the bottom left of your screen is a Warhammer 40,000 Chaplain's helmet. Um, God, I don't even know where I got the file from to pull it up. Let me, let me see if I can't pull it up over here. Yeah, so this picture is a little bit harder to see right here, but um, I, what I'll do is I'll take a picture of the helmet in the slicer where it's like viewing it head on and post that up on Twitter so that you guys can see that. I guess it would help if I back over the browser way. Yeah, that's the chaplain's helmet and really the the front is almost skull like um so it looks really really cool um, but i will get a a good picture either of the rendering or i'll pull it off of the website because unfortunately i have the pictures on my laptop not on my streaming computer. otherwise i oh yeah even on pi day like pi day for me it's like oh it's pi day Pies are, like, literal pie is on sale, and then all the raspberry pies are normally on sale. So, yeah, it, it'll be my day. That's coming up in a couple of weeks. So, but that's what we have printing down here. And so this is the edge of the helmet. Everything else you're seeing here, the little round crop circle-like things, are the organic support. Um, you can print the helmet and basically the front lower face, the rear um, and sides in two different halves, and then the top. 
But I found every time I do a multi-part helmet like that, that the fitment is just a pain in the butt. And there's just so, so much more cleanup and fill and work that has to go into it that it's, it's a lot of work. So. By the way, Westry, I did see the, the picture of the shield that you sent me. We were talking about last night and that is looking so killer so this is our goal uh to try and get this structure going for the day shouldn't be too bad um he does have a bomb file so bill of materials um wonderful excel spreadsheet it does have links to where you can get some stuff on aliexpress um, i don't know if he has other links or any I guess he has a couple of Amazon links in there as well. You know, smattering of basic screws. If you build printers or have printers, you probably have spares of those screws. Um, yeah, without further ado, we will go ahead and, and get started on this build. Um, there really isn't a build guide or document. Um, there are a series of videos you can go out on YouTube and watch. Um, for the most part, it's fairly straightforward and simple. So we're just going to go ahead and kind of feel our way through it. And since I have um, the wonderful ladies here with us today called Royal Nomi and Western One, I do want to say Thank you both. Um, when I got back from my trip yesterday, I did have a couple of presents waiting for me. Um, one was from my sister from another mister, Western One. And this is Xyltech um, Cobalt Blue Metallic PLA. Um, there it is. Get this opened up so we can take a look at it. I don't know if she knew that blue was my favorite color or um, if she's just a good guesser. But yes, blue is my favorite color. And. I haven't. I don't know if I've done any Xyltech PLA, but I have done um, their ABS, and their ABS prints very well. So, oh, did I not show that? I, I'm not sure if I showed that, but I will do it again. I will stabby, 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 stabby. Because that's how you open things, right? Right, right sis? Oh, Chewy, just about every order I get, I pick up um, Galaxy, or no, it's uh, Sparkle Black and Sparkle Dark Blue. Like, every, just about every order I get that stuff. Um, so here is that Xyltech Blue. And I'll say it says metallic, but I'm not seeing, like, the metallic lakes that you would normally see oh, that'll be interesting that might be a twist in there um but i'm not seeing like the flakes that you would normally see in like the galaxy dark blue but yeah i mean this i yeah thank you so much sis i will be printing something in this very soon on one of my printers um I just have to figure out which one wants food. Um, I do have another print going on back here. Let me, let me turn that one on too. So this is over on Purple Haze, which is our Prusa Mark III. I guess I should. The Prusa Mark III right here that we got from. 
Lisa Hirschberger. Um, I got that, reprinted all the parts in purple ABS, and that's now running, and that is running a Cinder Wing Rose Dragon, 125%, and it is printing in silk red. She wanted it. Uh, this is for one of my uh, best man's daughters. And so when I go out for Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Festival, I'm going to bring uh, both of his daughters uh, dragons. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it obviously doesn't have the flakes. And then the other one is some Kubin filament. And, and I like um, LA Silk Green Blue because these are a lot harder to read. And, I, and I'm with you there, Royal Nomi. And she did put a little note in here that said, thank you for joining the January event. Love, Mickey. So I did the little um, Mickey with the presents. Um, and thanks for all the support, Royal Nomi and BC. So let's take a quick gander at the Kubin element. Just looking at this um, in the bag, I mean, that looks awesome as it is, but we're going to stabby stabby. Yeah, Mickey was an awesome little print. Um, it was a Chelsea, sorry, I'm just realizing I'm bringing that up closer to the mic. It was a uh, Chelsea model that was up on things um, that I had printed. So, one second, out of the middle. There. So, this is another color changing filament. We had the silk blue on one side, silk green on the other. So, this is the co extrusion filament from Kubin. Okay, and so this, yeah, this may be calling out for a dragon as well. What do y'all think? Should we do like a dragon on this or maybe something from Flex Effect? You guys will have to, to let me know what you think. Yes, definitely two new um, spools that are very nice, colors I haven't used before, so that's going to be great. Appreciate it. Much love to both my sisters. That, that is awesome. Thank you for helping me out. Um, yes, Mercury Wine Bill. Uh, I mean, we're only almost an hour in, and we haven't done anything more than look at the parts and have them spread out all over the table. So I was going with a two tone blue. Um, before, um, and I'm switching over to a black and gold, and this will be called Gold Dragon. So, um, we will be taking this gantry apart and just transferring all the parts over onto the new gantry in a short bit. We're going to start off um, getting our feet installed on the bottom plate. That'll be pretty easy. Just flips over. It'll go just like that, and I'll have to figure out which screws go on for the another M5s, and it's just going to get screwed directly into the plastic. So you have to be careful that you don't like really torque down on it, because then you're just going to strip the plastic, and it's not going to hold anything. Um, this particular version on the on one of the mods I was doing before, this used set inserts. On all the screws on the new version it's using um we'll say like nut traps kind of hard to see there we'll put it you'll drop in your m3 hexagonal nut there and then come in from the top with a screw screw down your rails so that's what we'll be working on um i do need to bring background 
so I can see which screws I need. Five by sixteens. And M five sixteen front of and this part. So where did I put the new M five did buy? Give me one second to do it real fast. So, uh, we got in the I sixteen. Well, this be a fun day because I looked down and it was like where are my missing some of my um, hex drivers all right apparently I haven't had enough coffee yet my uh, brain's not fully engaged yet but some of my hex drivers are downstairs so I had to work on mercury rising this morning so I got home last night and ran input shaper on Mercury Rising and that helmet that is starting is a four day print. Well, I wanted to get it started so it was running running while my wife was out of town because you know she she loves having a printer running long prints in the dining room because that's where that printer sits um and so i ran input shaper so i could try and increase some of the acceleration some got the print started last night went to bed got up this morning and i was noticing that there was some stringing that was weird. It just looked weird. And when I started looking into it, I realized that the, so there's three Z lead screws, one at the back center, and then one at the front left and front right. The front right lead screw had dropped like 15, 20 millimeters. I was like, what is going on here? So I stopped it. I looked at it this morning, and there was um, the lead screws that they shipped with the kit are PTFE coated. And I noticed that a lot of that coating was starting to wear off because I, most of my prints are only, you know, 15, 20 millimeters tall. So I went ahead and added some lubricant to those. and. You know, ran the bed up and down some, double checked, made sure all the screws on the linear rails in the carriage were tight. And then I was like, okay, let's go ahead and get this print started again. So I got everything leveled out and got the print started again. So fingers crossed that we will not have any more shenanigans and it'll go well. And these are, I'll say, 
fairly tight um, tolerances on these um, holes. So you definitely are going to be cutting your own thread as you are threading these in. So that's that's good. I'll give you a nice, good, um, solid connection. The interesting part will be when we go to um, put our linear rods in for the uprights as to how well those fit in or if they are really tight. Maybe we need to get out our reamers and open the holes up just slightly. And you're, like I said, you're running these in. Yeah, it's a little bit um, because we're threading it. But as soon as you feel that change in resistance when you bottom the screw in, stop. Don't keep trying to ugga dugga and crank on it or you will strip the plastic and you'll have issues. At that point, it's either reprint the part or you could potentially you know, put some type of glue or epoxy in it to keep it in there, but then, well, that's, that's the part that you're never going to be able to release easily. So, Westry, how's everything going? How's the, uh, how's my little girl Mia and the, and our new Mustang diesel doing? You saw I've already called him out by name on Discord, right? The, the, the name has to stick now. So Royal Nomi, um, this build compared to the switchwire build that we just did, um, I should be able to push through and get this build like mechanically done potentially today or Tuesday, provided I don't have to drive up to Virginia and get Jen Tuesday, excuse me, get the wife Tuesday evening. Um, I am currently planning on still streaming Tuesday, unless that changes. Oh, wow. So diesel's putting on weight. That is good. Um, because don't they lose a little bit of weight initially when they get into a new surrounding just you know just like most animals they they tend to i don't want to say get skittish but they do get a little weird in a new environment and don't eat as much for the first few days until they figure things out And Shuri, you said you had posted some pictures on Discord. Um, which Discord channel was those added to? Or did you send them in a DM? And so that'll give you an idea of how this is going to look with the, um, this is Polymaker Galaxy Black and Polymaker PLA Pro uh, gold. I'm trying to think this might be the, I think this is the metallic gold. You have a little bit of, see it, might be able to see it here. You have a little bit of gold flake, I should say metallic flake shining through on these. Not as much as the, um, as the actual galaxy stuff. 
Oh, okay. Oh, good. Good deal. Um, so on this one, I will go ahead. I know it sucks because this one has the table. It's, um, you know what? I, I'll hold off on that. Hold off on doing the motors. May regret that. But I'll do the motors and mount the um, circuit board. So this will mount. Right like that. So the original design is for, I believe, the SKR um, Mini E3 V3, or maybe the SKR 3. Um, and then this is an adapter bracket that'll go on, and you'll mount this to the bottom carriage. And we will mount a um, uh, SKR Pico controller. And a Raspberry, well, it would be a Raspberry Pi Zero W, or uh, if it comes in in time and I want to mess with it, the Banana Pi M2W that I have coming in from China. It's supposedly stateside, but it hasn't hit customs stateside yet. So that could take forever. Um, and then your motor back here, this is the back of the printer. Yeah, I, I can tell you there's a little bit of flake in the gold, but it is, you have to hit the light just right. And it's more, you know, you can see it. Not. Yeah, you just have to get the light just right, and then you can see the flake in it. But there is a little bit of flake. You need to do a little bit of cleanup on those holes when I get to it. Okay, now we've got that in. We need to do the, um, we'll get our rods put in. And these are eight, eight millimeter linear rods. Um, hardens with chrome plating. And they are 200 millimeters long. And these will go down in the four corners. And that is going to be a tight fit. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is grab my reamers. So the nice thing with reamers versus drill bits is the reamers are more like a like an end mill almost, they have a flat head to them. Okay, and then these are the cutters on the side. So really what you what this allows you to do is slightly enlarge the hole to the right size and keep it um, round versus oiling it out, which is a good chance when you're using a drill bit one, you could drill all the way through the bottom where this would be able to go all the way down to the end and not dig in. And then two, it will, um, will keep you from possibly going in an angle and elongating that hole or more creating a slot. And you see I'm running this by hand versus using a, a tool. I could use a, uh, a drill, but I would probably pulse it simply because I don't want it to go too quickly and melt the plastic. Because once again, I'm just trying to get any burrs or over extrusion out so that the rod goes in and slides in, but there's no play. Right? So that's why I like these reamers. And I, I knew about reamers and I used them on my plane, but I never thought about using them for 3D prints. 
and I will say just a couple of turns and that one went all the way down to the end. So yeah, this is possibly just a little bit of over extrusion in these holes or, you know, the start and stop, how you'll get a little bit of a blob at the seam. So that's all we're doing is just clearing that out. And once again, we're doing it by hand so we don't damage the plastic or melt the plastic. Hey, John Strand, how are you doing today? Yeah, it's like a pencil show. Um, yes, John Strand, for those that um, are new to me at least, um, I have been building a Vans RV12, and I have to use um, So yeah, I'm building a Vans RV12, which is a two-seat um, all-aluminum aircraft with a 100 horsepower um, engine. I, I at this point, um, I, I'll say I've kind of stalled out on the process of the build. And the next stage, well, I've got the parts. I've got the parts to basically have wind up with a rolling chassis, right? So in that case, it'll be the fuselage, the tail, the wings, the tail surfaces, and it'll be up on its landing gear, aka its own two legs, and and um, English sometimes. It'll be basically a rolling chassis, a um, manual powered rolling chassis. The engine and the avionics. Um, so the way I'm building this is experimental light sport. And the, the reason I'm doing it that way versus the, the um, experimental amateur build. So if you do experimental amateur build, you have a 40 hour fly off time. Exactly. Talk about hobbies. It's a 40 hour fly off time. Well, what does that mean? That means I have 40 hours of test flying that I need to do. If I build it, you know, the same way following the same procedures as they do at the factory, the Vans Aircraft Factory, then I have a five hour fly off time, but I must use a brand new engine, brand new avionics and all that. So the engine and avionics, um, is about 65% of the overall cost of the plane. And we're, we're talking the, the brand new Rotax engine, you know, coming over from Bavaria or Austria, one of those two. Um, and the avionics, because avionics are never cheap, especially if they have to be certified, um, would be about $70,000. Okay, add rate. And I think I took a note and forgot um, to change up the ads. But while ad break is going on for the rest of you, I'm going to step away real fast and run downstairs and grab my other two um, hex drivers because I will need them once we get back to the uh, starting with the M3 screws. So you guys give me one second and I will be right back.
And we're back. How's it going, everybody? Um, so the yeah, that that airplane project is not a inexpensive project. I will definitely give you that. Um, and I think at this point we're going to put up the project and see if we can't uh, find somebody who wants to finish it out. Um, preferably in the local area so I get to see it when it's done. But, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, I started working on that airplane in Colorado. So it's already been six or seven years um, that I've been working on it. I, I am in North Carolina right now, John. Um, in fact, yesterday, the reason I didn't stream is my wife was going up for a conference in the Washington, D.C. area in uh, Crystal City, Virginia. And so I drove her up there and back yesterday, which gave me an excuse to stop at Micro Center on the way back. Because, um, But this plate right here, as you can tell, it's very thin. Its sole job is just to slide down and cover the electronics. That's, that's it. It doesn't have to be any, you know, thick or anything. And we'll just slide it down to the bottom. And I'm not even going to worry about putting like screws in here to hold that down because we may use these screws for other things. Um, in fact, once again, the the hole here is going to be for the um, the motor and the belt, right? So your motor is going to be um, undermounted, and then this is going to be the belt drive for the Z coming up, which means this is the rear of the printer, and that is where we are going to put our, our Z end stop. So this will get mounted right back here. And once again, this is going to go into and five holes, I believe. Yep. And I am pretty sure that I can get away with something less than the M5 succeeds, especially since they're going basically into the same holes that we just put our um, our legs into. So we will switch over and we'll go into just something a little bit smaller. Do M5 by 10. Uh -huh. You might be, just do M5 by, you know, for now. That's plenty of bite for stuff. We'll do M5 by 8 and probably before I go ahead and that on there. You go ahead and try the end stop. I might have to drill a little hole on there for the end stop. Yeah, by the way, you know, if you do if you have any Creality printers, you, you wind up with plenty of extra end stops. Um, they're always good to keep around. So, there's four holes for the pin stop, really only two on these uh, end stops. Two holes down at the bottom, not at the top. So we would mount these at the bottom, two holes. Top, you know, just not right. And that's where I was looking at, because of where that connector is, that connector will hit this bottom point. Because this bottom plate is a add-on. And normally, your end stop is right here. 
So this is a mod um, that would allow you to use the standard um, Crowley end stop as opposed to having to fabricate an Omron end stop right here. Um, we can we can go either way. What do you guys think we should do? Should we do the actual standard end stop here? In which case, we have to print the new part. Um, what do you guys think? Oh yeah, I, I've got plenty of uh, reality printers. I mean, I've got the OG Ender 3 in the corner there. I'm down here on the ground right now is Blue Dragon, which is the Ender 3, um, the switch wire conversion that we just finished. Red Dragon, which is the Ender 5, which is now a zero G. Three max down as well. Go with what I got? Yeah. Because if I do the, the other one, it's a bare end stop that you then have to go through and, you know, wire yourself, which is fine. Um, but what I would do is I would mount this um, in here, and I think I just need to put in a couple of set inserts. To, a couple of heat set inserts. And we'll go this route. Um... And then what I'll do is I'll just put some blue painter's tape here, get it in line, and mark that spot out. And then I can just uh, drill, drill a hole, make sure that the clip can go down in there. Just do it that way. Ooh. There's tape right there. Soldering iron. I recently picked up a set of picks from Harbor Freight. Yeah, these things are a godsend. Um, I am really, really liking the um, organic supports, but trying to dig them out of some places can be fun. I mean, they come out pretty well, but that's the one issue that, I'm, that I'll have to chase on like this part is some of the organic support is in the hole here. So just trying to get out some of that organic support. That's where the pick may come along. It comes off pretty easy. You just have to scrape a tad bit. Um, but yeah, it, a set of picks. And apparently my, my spouse frowns on me using the nice ones that came with her play cut. So when we were out at Harbor Freight the other day getting some more um, gloves, the resin print, she saw these and she was like, um, hey, you should pick some of these up. And like a good husband, I said, yes, ma'am. Okay. Two of these real fast. And this is PLA we're going into, so this should be real quick compared to ABS. And I just always keep my iron at the default. This case is 300C. And then what I always tend to do is use a flat surface to, uh, to just uh, press it in and make sure that it comes out flat to the surface. I 
get pretty close. And then I just push it in the rest of the way to make sure that it's flat. And boom, just like that. Give that a couple of seconds to pull off and we'll this. It's good it off on so myself. Can't wait to give you project bug boom. Uh oh. Are you build are you designing a, a printer chewy or Are you just planning on telling me about something new and cool that I'm going to have to go out and build and then get myself in trouble? These are, I'm going to actually got some three by six inches. Where are those? I use a couple of little button heads that I had because um, I think that all should work easier. So, don't know, but the full spacing may shift it some. So it inserts in. Once again, I'm going into PLA heat set inserts. Iron was too hot. We'll go ahead and put one screw in it now. Straight and. I have to print this part of the screen. That'll work to get our alignment. There. Working. the mark there's nothing underneath so my plan will be just to drill straight through
go ahead and mute the mic for this. That's good enough to get us started. Like I said, it's thin enough. I should be able to cut it now. Got something started. Because this should be thin enough that it is 100% infill, basically. So, no... Uh, you know, it's not like I'm going through just a layer and then, oh, there's, there's infill in the cavity and then I'm going through some layer. Um, this is just straight infill. Just a matter of working the knife in it to make for a semi-clean cut so that we can... Have a nice surface. Once I get the initial cut pulled out some, I'll come back in with a file. Just file it down, smooth it. Royal Nomi, what are you working on this weekend? Do you have any exciting prep projects you have going on? No, your printers were being bad the other day.
Now, is that just uh, like routine maintenance down, or do you have stuff that that broke hard? Okay. And you're going to do the sound wave off of Nico. Okay. I'm just slowly working around this to, to get this hole nice, no sharp edges because we will have wires. It should just be the connector fitting in through it. Wires themselves should be way on this edge. Clean up the burring tool to get rid of the, say, the residual fuzz from the file. bit more on the side. Yeah. Once again, I'm trying to go um, with relatively small M5 bolts here because I'm going in the same holes that the feet M6 or M5 by 16 bolts were in. So I don't want to bottom out against those and not be able to get the in stop tight. So there's that. He's back in. By the way, hey, Mr. Rick, how are you doing? Yeah, this is just a bottom plate. It's just a couple of millimeters thick, and it's just there to cover up the, you know, the electronics and the wiring so you don't have anything falling down on the electronics. Whoops that'll be down in this area. So we're going to mount, um, rather than just using this mount, 
and using a uh, like an SKR Mini E3, I believe is what it's for. I'm going to mount this plate and mount a Atriotech SKR Pico board with a Raspberry Pi Zero or a Banana Pi M2, which is the same form factor. And so that's how I'll do the electronics. The, um, the stepper motor will go right here with the belt. Stepper motor will go here. Belt drives right through there. So the other thing I need to look at is with that stepper motor there, do I have enough clearance? And what size stepper motor can I put there to get the right clearance? It doesn't have to be ultra super duper powerful, but it will need to have you know, standard, um, you know, like one of the standard smaller Creality ones would work. I planned on using the LDO one, but on hindsight and looking at it, with how far that comes back and knowing that the Pico, all the electronics come in on the side, um, I have to figure out which way to mount the Pico or look at getting a smaller pancake motor for the Z-axis, um, which may be one of, one of these smaller motors. So we'll, we'll have to see um, which motors I wind up using where. Okay, so that's that. The next thing would be the, um, the bed. Now, the standard Element U bearings whoops, will work in here. Um, however, they do suggest using the LM8L U, the long ones. Those of you not on a break, cheers. It would be the need for a highly caffeinated day. Between crab arms, zen vendors in. Did not see you all pop in. Not sure if you guys chatted. Sorry, I was head down and jumping around a bit, so I haven't paid attention to chat as much as I should have. You're on the channel, just not seven ads. Oh wow. Um yeah, it won't let me change head settings while I'm in a stream. So I've got to remember to take that note and right after the stream, I will go through and pull the ads out. But sorry about that, hey, Mr. Rick. So I do have some Elemate U bearings. Um, they suggest using the LM8. L UU bearings, the long ones that are 45 millimeters. So that would stick out a little bit on each end. Um, I'm just going to go with the standard ones for right now for this build. If I have any issues and, and I feel I need to, then I will go through and get some more Elemate UUs or um, recover them off of the D bot right, um, right over that shoulder. That machine there. Um, and the build that I'm doing has the clamps. I really like this because it, 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 there's some, the ability to tighten down these bearings so you get them running good. Um, one of the things that I had issues with before was the um, if the bearings aren't tight enough, there's some play. 
and you'll get a lot of chatter as the bed's moving up and down or in case of the Crystal Mark III sliding back and forth. And what was that? So I just quickly glance at the holes here and they look a little oval. So I'm just going to run an M3 reamer through them just to make sure that they're opened up, make it easier to thread the uh, M3 bolts in. Right, reamer. I get the one small one out without dropping all the other ones. Just kind of just making sure that they're clean all the way through. And I got out all of the support material because I was trying to use the organic supports, which come off really easily. Um, but sometimes you do miss a little piece in there or it's got a little edge that will make screwing something into it that much harder. And what I'm doing right now is looking... So this is a mod, so it's not listed in the basic bomb. So I'm gonna have to try and just gauge which size bolts. Probably M3 by 20 is so if I can dig out the back one. For those, 24 nuts and say look like there's for the nuts here so um what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one side in at a time uh, meaning like the top or the bottom side of the build plate just because I don't want to these nuts have a tendency to drop out and then go anywhere and everywhere and get stuck in so trying to get pushed in initially but these were Maybe they're square nuts. Let me go square nuts. Rolahan bomb says everything is hex nuts, but once again, this is the mod to to the Mark One. So I just need to square nuts. These are M3 square nuts. You should. Yep, that fits in nicely. So I'm going to put my Elemate U bearing in, stick my one square nut in, and go ahead and put my screw in and try and capture that square nut.
in a square dot are bigger than words. It's time you have to protect. So my advantage. This kind of thing. Let me see if that works out. All right, there we go. Start again. I'll go through and do the other side. Get it started, and we will put our piece back. The sign in. Just a little. Think of something in there. They are they are simply held in with friction. Uh, hey, Mister Rick, and there will be a top plate that'll go on as well. So yeah, everything is just a friction fit. something what I'm fighting with now is a seam
Never be afraid to use a file on a part if it's too tight. Use a file, clean the part up. These are look like they were just it's not just it's square nuts. Sturdy. Yeah, on the this is the Rohan Rook Mark One. Um, this is the final iteration of the Rook in this form. This is a now a, a stagnant design or static design, not a stagnant static design that can be used for people who want to mod the printer and several people have. That's um, this bottom plate um, was a design by Gulsifer and that will protect your um, electronics. The Z in stop mount that I'm using is a, another mod and that is to reuse a Corality in stop rather than um, going out and having to wire up your own end stop. Um, and then we also have some different top gantry parts that I'm using. They're also part of a Gulsifer mod. Um, and that is designed to that once again is designed to make it a little bit stronger and more reliable probably for faster printing but i am not chasing speed I just never felt the need to chase speed on printers um i, I prefer reliable prints that work um that especially on a multi-day print like you see um, started down in the lower left screen. That is a what may wind up being a four-day print on the Ender 5 Plus, and it will be a Warhammer 40,000 Chaplain's Helmet. All right, this is going. I got one in, and then the others are going to fight me. And like I said, it looks like the holes were actually made for a uh, M3 hex nut versus the square nut. But I can't get my hex nuts to fit. And the square nuts look like they're not seating down just far enough for me to 
get a bite on them with the screw to pull them in. Try and do is use the uh, front side of the thing is not a solid surface, but let's see if we can this one. There we go. I saw the pain in the butt. This one's going to be a pain in the butt because it's now completely. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can mix TPU 90 and 95 high flow. Are you talking about just doing it in the same print, like doing a, a standard uh, filament change? I mean, you should. I don't know why those two TPU materials would not adhere at the lens. Then that one just falls in meant to. Um, yeah, true. I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't work. Um, I mean, it, to me, it would, should work just fine to do a standard M600. There we go. Apparently it was just super tight right at the top. Let's see if we can pull this out and screw in there or the right type of nut in there. Where it comes.
And I tell you, I, I think screws just mess with you just on live stream. Just, just because they can. Oh, you need a phone case? Okay. So what you want it just to be like a little bit harder on the outside and the sides to be a little softer? Yeah, and I, I get scared every time because I've got carpeted floor up here, as you can tell. And I get scared every time I come up here to run the vacuum cleaner because, yeah, it's just... I'm afraid I'm going to like suck something up and destroy the vacuum. All right, and once again, I'm going to run these and see how they work. And if I need to, I will swap them out for the larger size down the road. But I just want to see how these work. I'm just going to tighten these up and get just a tad bit of tension on them to start with. And then we'll get it on the printer and we'll work it. You know, we'll add some tension if we need to. Again, be careful as you're sliding these on the rods. You don't want to push any balls out and lose them. Should just slide down just nicely. Catching is just that there's not enough tension on them so that they're. More slipping rather than rolling as far as the balls go. You, you see that play right there? That's why you want to use the longer ones is to take some of that play out but you should also be able to get some of that out just by tightening the bearings against the rods. It's just a lot of play. I like it. See how much play there is there. That's you drop your phone a lot, yeah. You know, as soon as I come out here in the front and I start trying to do a lift, I mean, it's, yeah, I'm going to have to get some LMA, LU bearings, swap those out. Um, the good news is, once I take the reamer to this, it'll go on and off fairly easily. I know some people go back and forth on, you know, should you ream, should you not ream, how much do you ream? Um, like I said, I'm just doing it to take any burrs that are inside out, and I'm doing it by hand. I'm just trying to. 
That way I know I'm not enlarging it, I'm just really running it through. It'll just make it that much easier to seat these on. Really, all this does, John, um, as you were here when we were talking about before, is this is just taking off any of the high spots on the extrusion. You know, once again, this is, I'll say, an, an external perimeter on the inside of these holes. So, you know, there there is a chance for a little bit of a uh, burr from the start and stop process. I say a, I call it a burr, but you know, just a. a an over extrusion part as it as it goes through and that hole is just a little bit too tight so we'll give it a little bit of extra room. Once again, I'm not going to run it full bore. I'm just going to Might have been the back one where the Z seam was at. Once again, the plate where the belt comes through, that's going to be the back side. So, this is what will start providing you the rigidity of your frame, having all four of your rods lined up. go on there fairly easily you need to light persuasion you're not trying to crank the heck out of it this ever so slight persuasion reason this rod Looking this down, and you want it just so that it is flush at the top. Okay. And those are really Yeah, we're going to we're going to mess those bearings now. They're going to annoy me if I don't.
these will annoy me if I don't do it. And these bearings were packed, um, you know, cleaned and packed. Um, they came out of one of my spruces when I swapped the beds from from linear rods to linear rails. So they should be good and shouldn't need to be removed or anything at this point. So Even like they're running good. It's just the fact that once you get a little bit of counterweight on. It hurt to do some more. This method, you're definitely pushing all of the lubricant into the into the walls and the braces. be plenty of yeah these may have actually made it worse Okay, which movie are you going to go see, uh, BC? Oh, 
Oh, he left already? Okay. Gosh, these things are like... Chunky, chunky bearings. No, uh, what the... Deal is, so they're chunky. I mean, I guess I could go completely different route because I do have some Delrin um, bearing. He's going to go see Ant-Man. That's, uh, I, I still need to go see that. One second, I'm going to step off screen. Okay, so the last option we can try are some Delrin bearings. Yeah, I, you know, I, I like going to the movies um, and normally I'll go to the movies with my boys, and I went when the younger son was out here, but when the older boys were out here, we didn't go to the movies, and it was one of the things that he made a comment of when we were on the way to the airport, was like, we didn't go to the movies this time. Yeah, I can watch movies at home, but I, I like going to the theaters, especially since I have a... Um, uh, small mom and pop theater that managed to stay open through COVID. I think it did change um, uh, owners though, but it, at least it stayed open. A little bit of compression on there. So with the Delrin bearings, um, that's one thing is they do have to I'll say compress them in their holder. Um, otherwise, they will be loose. But the Delrin bearings are self-lubricating, so they will um, lubricate themselves through the, through the normal wear process. Yeah, we'll go ahead and give that a try. We'll give that a try. Chuck them. Oh yeah, definitely go while people are at church and stuff. Got that, we've got our top mount and the nut holes will be on the bottom for the linear rails. And what I'm trying to do is just focus on building this from the bottom up. Um, 
I could go through and get the linear rails added now and and all of that, but I wanted to just build this from bottom to top. Of course, I haven't done the z-axis yet because I need the top on there to even think about the z-axis. So there we have that. Now I'm going to take apart. I just remember watching the videos and them saying, you know, you have to pound nuts in on the frame, but I don't think you have to. I think they've changed it so there's no nuts on the frame and you're just um, threading it directly into plastic. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to focus on taking this previous gantry top frame apart so I can get to my rails and installing my rails on this one. Pull my screws off. I'm just going to toss them back in the container because I have a feeling they're all going to be different screws. Well, in different sizes between this build, because I'm using a different tree. Third one. Okay, Royal Nomi, uh, enjoy. Thank you for coming and hanging out and being here so I can show you that cool filament that you sent me. Um, like I said, I will definitely have to print something with it, and that one's probably screaming for a dragon front. front uh, a dragon. Maybe one of Center Wing's newer dragons. Press boom bang. Three by two. I and I will need that. And I will have to get it. Hey, Phil. So has anybody else seen Ant Man? And if so, what would you think of it? I might need something to do later tonight. Um... So LDO making him a kit, um, you mean for the Rook? Because I know uh, Fabrico is selling, they're taking pre-orders for the kits now. Is LDO the ones that are putting it together for them? Okay, sweet. Yeah, I, I was actually looking like, do I pre-order one of these just so I have a self-source build and a... Um, so a self-sourced and then a kit built one. So I really like the uh, Fabrico kits. That's what I used for the Zero G Mercury was the Fabrico kits. And it had everything I needed and then some. So I do really like the Fabrico kits. Now, I know Fabrico's selling the kits. I just don't know. 
because I think they're they're using their honey badger rails, and I just don't know like what motors are using. But you know, Fabrico and just about everybody else is starting to use LDO motors, um, or a you know they they may have their um, honey badger motors. You know, it's probably going to be the honey badger rails, honey badger motors. Um, it'll probably have. Uh, oh, what am I? The uh, that weird PEI sheet and bed. It may have the LDO bed because it was LDO that was making that. Um, that polymer heater heating pad, right? But yeah, most of them are using like LDO or Moon's um, motors that are, you know, just rebranded. And done. Oh, Very stop. Whatever reason, apparently I didn't have the right size socket head, so I want button head on this one. Are you still hanging around, Westry, or did you sneak out on me? So, Chewy, what kind of... Uh kind of printer builds are you looking at these days or mods or anything else? We did that. The means go back on. Okay, and that's your CHT. Okay, okay, I got you. Um, yeah, I haven't. 
I keep looking at the CHT, and every time I look at the CHT, I'm, I'm just, it immediately comes back to Revo. That's a Revo. That's a Revo. And so as far as the CHT goes, I just really haven't uh, put a whole heck of a, thought, a lot of thought into getting one. Because I love my Revos, and yeah, with the Revos, you know, you can you can swap everything out between the different uh, um, English. Suit. You can swap all the hot ends or the the nozzles out and everything between anything that's in the Revo system, and it's fairly easy. Now on the on the CHC, do you have to hot tighten, or is it still a single hand tighten for the nozzle? Because I was seeing some that almost look like you still had to do a heat tighten of the extruder for the nozzle. I'm just not sure if that buys you much from standard. Other than, yeah, like you said, the, the heater cartridge itself being ceramic and being way easier. Okay. Just trying to wipe down some of the excess because I was noticing that there was a lot of excess. That rail. Um, and these will be please. So, we have to be right back. Um, I can't get my new driver set down here, so I need to go grab the old driver set so that I can take these top carriages or these uh, XY joints off the carriages because I will need to do that um, in order to put the new gantry on. So let me go downstairs and grab the other set that I moved down there earlier. I will be right back. We will uh, we'll give you the be right back screen. I'll leave it like this. That way you can keep an eye on Mercury rising while I'm uh, going down. And I'm back. Try to quick snack. That print is coming along beautifully. Boom. See if I can't resize this. Yeah. 
yeah, that, that color is just coming out beautiful. And that, once again, that is the Polymaker PLA Pro um, Bronze Metallic. on that as it continues to print. Once again, we also have purple haze over there printing away. Join the Cinder Wing Rose Dragon Silk Red. Okay, so I went and grabbed those. So the, the reason I need it is the gantry parts have these holes right here that you have to get into in order to get the um, screws out, put the screws in to the screws out. And it's just an extremely tight hole and I remember now why because i printed these these darker parts are in um carbon fiber pet g and so that's why it's, it's the, the carbon fiber just for whatever reason makes it such a tighter hole and I, i've had problems on the death racer because i I printed the Death Racer and the Carbon Fiber Pet G as well. And I've actually snapped some of the M3 bolts off on that, trying to get them in. And that would be the, uh, like, the M like the longer ones, like the M3 by 50 um, bolts that went into the wheels. I snapped two or three of them off at the head, just sheared them right off, trying to put them in. So that's why I'm going to... <clears throat> reprint the death racer and redo it just all in PLA because it's going to be rigid enough um, for just whatever reason I thought oh well let me do it in carbon fiber pet G is that'll that'll give me a good durable print and I'll be able to run it without any issues and yeah it swells a little bit when it prints and I've gone through and tried drilling those holes to three millimeters and then threading them in and I've still snapped screws even after opening the holes up to, to a full three millimeters. I, I have no idea what's going on. So Death Racer parts will be reprinted most likely over on the uh, Mercury and then um, we'll get that going. Because I'm not going to take that to Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest with me because I'm not going to try and take an RC electronics thing on the plane. Um, but when I go to Murph, I will be driving, so I will have it at Murph. Okay, so that stuff's done. Now we're going to take the fly rails off. Um, are you going to Rocky Mount, Murph, or both? Murph? Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely be rolling around Murph. Um, like I said, my younger son lives in the Goshen, Indiana area. He used to live about five miles or five, miles, five minutes away from the venue. Now he's a little bit further, but not too much. He's like 18. I should see if M three by twenty five. 
for the flywheel. Sixteens. We'll just go ahead back in the van. Eyes with top. And there's only four holes for each one of these. These are the 200 millimeter linear rails for the Y, which means they do go directly over the, uh, the linear rods. Yeah, I might try and go to Earth too. Um, I've got, well, my brother lives up in the Fredericksburg area, and my buddy, Evil Diesel, who may go with me to Murph, and, and as well as uh, he's talking to me about Earth, because I think he has family in that area, so we would be able to have a place to crash and not have to run into hotels in, in Virginia and stuff. Okay, so these are gonna go on with M3 by 25s, and We have the spots underneath for the hex nuts. So we will also grab our hex nuts just. So I've got those and I've got some of the black hex nuts for my boron builds. Okay, why not make the fasteners disappear if you know if you can. Sounds good to me. And the big question I have, will they fit or will they have to receive suckers in? It's been some. Now, on these normally, if you can get them started, or at least like flush, like I was just able to do there, then you can pull them the rest of the way in as you're tightening the screw. But it's just a matter of getting them started so that they don't fall out. And the nice thing is, is these are actually nice, tight, tolerant prints. I've done some prints in the past where it's like, oh, put an M3 nut there. And then you stick it in there, you, you stick the part up to actually put the screw in, and all the nuts fall out, and it's just annoying. But yeah, these are these are a nice good tight friction fit, so And all I'm doing is using the flat back side of this as a Just like that, those are in. And like I said, they're tight enough that they're not going to come out. So we'll move it back up. We'll get our rail back on. Line it up on the Our bolts in. Number Now, 
as far as alignment goes, you know, you can sit here and say, oh, well, we can we'll run these screws in and it'll be aligned. And the, the answer will be no. No, it will not be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get these in. They're not going to be tightened down all the way. So the rail will still be able to move side to side just a little bit. And as we use, or as we mount some of the other components on here, it will align these rails. God, we could probably get away with 20s on this instead of 25s. See what I mean? These, these 25s are popping way through. So I'm going to swap these out. Instead of doing the 25s, I'll do 20. Because I haven't even tightened it to the point where I'll suck the nuts up. So 25s are really way too big for that. So 25s are way too big, and 20s, I'll say, are small unless you've pulled the nuts up, and you might be able to get the 20s. Maybe we have to go. Other ones. See, I'm going to tighten this one down to pull that nut all the way up. Try and swap it over. Which job and find a decent boss. Yeah, those. Um, so I have a, I have a pretty good job. I can't complain about. I work for Cisco Systems, and you know I I get my annual leave. So I, you know I, I'm just going to take leave and go up there. But like normally, what I'll do with my with Merv might be a little bit different this year because I'm going to take my buddy Evil Diesel with me. But what I would do is I would drive up the weekend before, spend the week at his house. Basically, um, you know, I, I work from home anyhow. So I would basically stay at his house working from home. And uh, go over there Friday night, Saturday, and then Sunday. Everybody starts breaking down a little bit early anyhow, so I just take off and, you know, start cruising back. These worked. Oh, yeah. I hate that when your boss is a jerk and you're employed by yourself. Um, well, I mean, it, do you have to be at the house to to do stuff for work? Or I guess I don't know what kind of work you do. So I guess it depends on whether or not you have to be around, you know, especially equipment or anything to do the work that you do. Okay, an equipment dealership with service center. So is that like heavy machinery equipment 
tech equipment? Like what kind of uh, equipment? So that rail has got a little bit of play to it, which is good for now. Like I said, as we start putting like our our um, our, our motor mounts and stuff on here, it will definitely start tightening things up, and we will have our proper distances and everything for things. So. And then, like I said, what's, what we will wind up doing is once we get our cross gantry in place, then we'll start rotating this front and back. We'll lock down one side and we'll key the other side off of like the left or right side, whichever one we down first. Okay, so this ring, come up. Okay, so so like small engine type stuff, mainly. Yeah, that's really cool. But yeah, really. If, if in something like that, if you're out of town, you're you're not able to to make any income, bring income in at that point. So yeah, that I get that. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so like right now, I'm I'm in a city, but it's the town of Sanford in North Carolina, which is a relatively small town compared to like a Raleigh or a Cary, Duke, which are all in that Raleigh. You know, say the initial layer layer of suburbs, which is. Pretty much might as well be in Raleigh at that point. Um, and I like it out here because there's not as many people. There's not a lot of traffic. It's just a lot slower pace. And I guess as I've hit my 50s, I just turned 51, that I'm just like, yeah, I'm not all about the fast paced stuff anymore. Pretty chill good with just chilling out and relaxing change sucker he didn't get in there square But yeah, I've just found as I've gotten older that, like, yeah, I don't need that fast pace anymore. I want to just chill out and leave the city life, enjoy the the calm and quietness that is the country. Um, I eventually want to get some property where I've got like 20 to 40 acres that I can, you know, have the big garden on, have my my big workshop and and 3D printing area, studio, whatever we want to call it, and you know, be able to go and hunt as well, and not have to worry about a lease and somebody sitting my stand and, and taking a deer that I've been eyeing all season or something. And, Yeah, just try and go back to a little bit more simpler life. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, nowadays, I mean, I'm hiring a position right now 
and it's hey if you're in this area great but even if you're in the raleigh north carolina area you don't actually have to go in the office if you don't want to i mean we're we're uh doing what they refer to as the hybrid work stuff so as long as you can get onto the network and vpnn you're good Gotcha. Yeah, that's really cool, though. Oof. Let's let that one get away from them. All right, so we got those on. We'll have the other brackets, and I am going to need to do some cleanup on top of those. Wow. Let me, let me, so these are all kinds of mangled still supports, so I need to do a little bit of cleanup on, get a little bit of organization. Oof. Yeah, these uh, new Prusa organic supports work really well, and the cleanup is rather easy. I mean, yeah, I'm using a Vacto knife right now, but once you get on under it, it it just peels up and take a big chunk of the layer off of the shot. Really, the, the reason I'm worried about these right now is because this is where our bearings are going to go. Bearing stacks, so I'm just trying to make sure that they're going to have a nice place to ride against because I know it is a tight fit.
cleaned up. in the actual holes. Okay, and these bearing stacks um, are easier to put in before you um, mount these. So that's why I wanted to try and get these cleaned up a bit so that I can do the bearing stacks real fast. Bearing stacks are pretty simple. Um, it's washer or shim, um, bearing, bearing, shim. I believe these are just one stack, two. two. They are two. I'll check it. Five by thirty front pipes. I think I built a printer recently. Okay, so we're starting to go in. And we'll do a washer. Now on the washer, you have a kind of a rough side. Yeah, it has a burr on the center. You have a smooth side, shiny side. That means it was stamped in this direction when they stamped it out of basic sheet metal. The burr side, I always put towards the plastic part. Because that catches that it's fine. It's, it's there simply to give a better surface for your bearing race to sit again. So then we'll go bearing, flange side to that washer, rotate our bolt in a little bit more, and we'll stick another bearing on there. Now, it's only one washer instead of two, if I remember right, because the space is just so tight on this. Rotate this a little bit more. We'll put our other set of bearings in. One. Just a smidge because it's going to start getting tight. That one in. Rotate our screw through. Put 
Just let that start to bottom out. Back that off just a bit. Now comes the fun part. You gotta get a little washer right up in that top between the printed piece and the either. We're gonna have to just kind of gentle and work it around. If you feel like your screw's in the way, just back your screw off a little bit more. Then you should be able to get it pushed in. This is where you might need to use some tweezers or vector knife to kind of move it around, center it in that hole. So you can get your, your bolt to run up into. That didn't work. So we will do our bolt. Try and move that washer in there again. This is why we needed to go in and really clean up that top surface because there, there's really no real room up in here. So the more room that we can give ourselves to play with, this last washer, the easier it'd be to get in there. Is it? Now you're going to go into the threaded, not the threaded, but you're going to go into the plastic for the last little bit. So once again, you're threading into plastic. Don't crank down on it. There is no set insert or anything in there for these M5 screws. So as soon as you feel that resistance increase from where you bottomed out the head of the bolt, that's it. You stop. You keep going. Boom. We just bottomed out. If we keep going, we will strip out the bottom piece and then it basically becomes a loose pin that can go up and down and allow these to move. So that would be your front eye lever. Okay. So now on to the next one. Once again, we're going to get our screw in there and start screwing it in. a little bit in there for this first piece just to give you some playroom. Once again, start with a washer with the burr side facing the plastic. We're going to grab two bearings, put the flange side down against that washer, and give us a little twist on the screw to give us something to catch the next bearing. It goes in the opposite direction. And that's basically creating the idler for our belt. We'll go ahead and move that screw up a bit more. Get our next washer in. Just pick an orientation for that. Grab two more of our bearings. Okay, so first one in. You can see it. I just want to turn that screw until I just see it pop proud like that. Just where it's popping proud of the um, the, the other uh, bearing. That will give me just enough room to slide the next bearing in. And if not, pull it back slightly. That next bearing can go in now. Get that lined up. Rotate our screw. We don't want to go too far until we start putting in that other um, washer. Once again, the rough side goes up against the printed part. Feel it screws in the way, so I'll just back the screw down some. But pushing that washer in.
It's like there's a bird there or something. In this case, I don't know. I might ha still have too much of a, a rough surface on the top of the idler because it's way too tight in there. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the bearing stack back out. A little bit more cleanup work on there. See if we're better now. Super so one of the things that you can do, and it actually calls for it, but I normally try and go the cheaper route of using washers um, rather than precision shims. Do you have some of those? One. Thing is, with the precision stems, actually cut to a specific tolerance. Um, this is. So that's why they call them out, designed it to a tight tolerance. You need those stems.
Sorry for stepping off. Too much stuff and I have it fully in trouble. And I am seeing that. Sorry. Here I've used them, which I'm pretty sure I did not, or I had them sufficiently from myself. So we will have to figure out how to make that work. Which could just be literally trying a different
Yeah, but that one just got in. And I think we got success now. It's just a matter of working with different washers to get it in there. Like I said, the, the best thing to use would be the precision shims. They're just they're a little more expensive. And if you can get away without using them, which 90% of the time I can, then why not, you know? Eiler's belt, and these will go on. Once again, it's the front of the machine. Um, the, the side with the plastic that will go down. Blah, 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 blah. So this one's going to mount in through the front. This is going to mount in through a side hole. So you get it lined up. Where it's at and then you'll run your screws in and the idler mounts are m3 by 16s for mounting the, the idler towers m3 by 16s Once again, these are going to thread into plastic, so. Get them going, but don't, uh, as soon as you feel that resistance from where the head is bottomed out, you're done. Don't keep going, strip them. Ah, oh, these do have the, these do have spots for, that's right here at the top edge. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and take the rails back off. Because if I remember right, you pretty much have to persuade those nuts in and I do not want to do that with it sitting over on its rail oh hey everything plus ultra this is the Rook mark one by Rolohan and yeah it's it's a mostly printed printer so it uses um, PLA st printed structure with 200 millimeter, if it's M9C for the Y and 150 for the X. And yes, Zombie Hedgehog has built one or two of these. So, and what I've been working on is this is the standard top frame, standard base plate, standard feet, but I am using the um, Gulsifer bed, and I wound up using Delrin bearings because my LM8 bearings were just 
trash and chunky. And these will break in after they after they've been used a little bit. And I've got the Z end stop that uses a Creality end stop. And then on the bottom, uh, this is a this is just a really thin cover. It's just there to keep the electronics a little more safe and not have anything fall down on them. But on the bottom here, we're going to mount uh, a bracket that will allow us to put a Raspberry, should be a SK, a Big Tree Tech SKR Pico and a Raspberry uh, Zero W, um, or potentially I have a banana pie coming in, and that'll mount right down there. And then this will be the Z motor mount for the belted Z. Oh, okay, so you're able to recover from that layer shift and just did glazing over it? So I'm going to try and reuse some Creality motors. Um, with the way these are, as you can see, they are offset, so I may be able to use these as is. If not, then I do have a puller, and I can pull these pulleys and use some standard GT22 pulleys, um, an extruder motor from a Focus, and the belted Z would be the Y motor from a Prusas LDO motors. So I'm just really sticking to the parts that I have on hand, and I have a uh, Bitree Tech Pico board that I did buy that I had thoughts of putting in my B0 right here, baby blue, but I've decided not to do that because she is printing so well, and I do not want to mess with her because she's just printing great flawlessly. Okay, that that would be great if you're able to recover it and and not chunk away a. I'm assuming a roll or two of plastic to get the um, thing on there for the uh, layer shift out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work this top off. These holes are right now just really friction fit, both top and bottom. Um, and what I did was they were a little bit tight. So I, uh, I used a M, uh, eight millimeter reamer to get off any over extrusion or burrs on the holes so that um, they, they maintain that eight millimeter um, hole diameter for the rods. So I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see, but there is a spot right there for a nut. That nut needs to be in there to hold that idler bracket. And I watched them basically pound those nuts in at an angle with a screwdriver and hammer with the printer flipped upside down. And I would so, so much rather not take a hammer right next to um, these rods if I do not have to. And once again, they did not call for any square nuts. So even though I just grabbed my square nuts, I'm going to lightly put them back and come over here for my standard hex nuts and see if we can't get one of these lined up and down. It might just be that they are, no, I think these are gonna wind up being square nuts.
And I say that simply because the holes themselves are very, very thin. Uh, those are going to be tight even for square nuts. And I see why they have to use a flathead screwdriver and pound these in. What I'm going to do is the same trick before. I'm, I'm going to get them started. Then I'm going to use the flat side of my um, pliers here to apply pressure to get them down in there as far as I can and make them flush with the outer edge. And if they need to go down further, we will uh, apply a judicious amount of force as needed. Yeah, those are not even close because they have to go that deep. So let me have my flathead. And I am going to mute myself because I am now going to pound these flathead screws down in there. Oh well, Carpet Monster got yet another one. Um, these are close, but not fully lined up. I'm trying to be careful I don't damage any of my tools. I'm trying to get these things just down in there.
and you saw basically what I was doing was trying to get a second tool down there because the my screwdrivers are too thick to get down deep enough into the holes. So that one side just slide. All right, I got to fight. Very nice. This next one. So one goes into an actual not the other one, one coming in from the side just goes into the plastic. Most clean. Gotcha. Hey, Subsector, how you doing? Oh, never be sorry. I know you're super busy. We're just uh, working on a rook build and having fun. Um, we've, uh, um, had to be banging around on some stuff because we've got some screws that aren't lining up appropriately, or excuse me, the screws are lining up great, it's the, um, the nuts, the captive nuts that are in the print that I cannot get to line up appropriately. Yeah, this is a Rook Mark I that I'm trying to build. And it's just being a pill right now because I've got, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to screw these idlers into the holes. There are nuts that have to go in these slots right here. So I've got a nut in there, but it's just not down far enough. 
and I can't seem to get it driven down in there the rest of the way because this screwdriver is too um, thick to get into that hole. But maybe I'm going to have to try and manhandle it and work it. Yeah, I just can't get that darn thing down far enough. I even tried, like, hey, let's put a second um, nut in there and see if we could you know, give us more room to push down in there. And that didn't seem to want to work either. At least not on this side. Wondering if there's like something like a piece of plastic that's down in that hole that's blocking it. But all right, I'm gonna mute everybody real fast because I'm gonna hammer on this again. I've got the I've got the dead blow hammer out. So going to have to see how it goes. See if we can, if we got down far enough that we can capture it. Now. The subsector down in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you'll see a print going on Mercury Rising. That is a Warhammer 40,000 Chaplain's Helmet um, in Polymaker Metallic Bronze. Really
So Subsector, what are you working on today? Any new prints that you're, that you're uh, willing to share with us? We'll have to come back to that enough. So subsector, when is your when is the show that you're going to the reptile show, or has it already happened? Um, your reptile show, when, when is that show or has it already happened?
just curious to see how that show goes for you and and uh you know how your sales and stuff work. especially considering you know it's it's the reptiles niche and everything that you were printing for so I was, okay so sis isn't paying attention to my stream but she's talking to you i get it i get it now Ay, ay, ay. All right, Westry. Oh, God. Am I going to have to separate you two? Okay, so there's one that comes in from the side and one that goes in from the back. I believe these are still going to be the M3 by 16s. Now, the ones that are coming in from the back take a, it'll be kind of hard to see here. Let me see if I can't get it up here. But they use a captive, there you go, sort of, captive hole there for another hex nut on each side. That's what the, um, the back screws will go into. And then the screws coming in from the side will just go directly into the plastic again. Um, yeah, and that's exactly what this one's going to be for subsector. I'm thinking I may bring all of my small printers. So um, when I go to Murph, because I'm flying into Rocky Mountain, so I'm not going to bring anything just because I don't want to take electronics on planes. I don't want anybody freaking the hell out on me in TSA. So I'm going to um, just fly in for Rocky Mountain. And then for Earth, I will plan on bringing, because I'm going to drive up, so I'll bring several machines with me. And my plan is to bring like the Prisa Mini, the Rolahan Rook, and maybe even my V0. Maybe the V0. We'll have to see just because um, I may have another person rolling with me, so I need to make sure I've got room for everybody. those in there, your motor mounts, which relatively easy to get mounted. Once again, these are going to be the M3 by 16s. They're pretty much going to go all the way in from one side and then all the way in from the back. Started and get to work. They'll be in LA or, or New Orleans. Okay. Hey, Bionic, how are you doing this, or this afternoon? This evening. Wow. The guy that's used to streaming on nighttime. Driving? Yeah, okay. So listen and learn, please. Pay attention to while you're driving. Don't need any accidents or anything. Apparently, it's these are different size than the. So these are are modified uh, top hat pieces. I call them top hats. So 
Um, my assumption was that the 16s would work, the same before, but they won't because the 16s are just going to get us through. So the 16 will work from the side, but I'm going to need probably a 20. Probably a 20 to come in from the back. I mean, it's recessed a little bit, but not fully. But in order to get through the, the two print, yep, there we go. M3 by 20, rock solid into that um, M3 nut. And just And then these are coming in like right close to the edge of the rail. So if anything, these are going to, as these thread in, they're going to pro provide some compression to the top of the rail. I feel like I'm, I'm tapping out. So rather than 16s, let's just drop down and we'll do, I don't know, 10s. I don't think we need to go in too darn far on these. Maybe eights because tens feel like they're bottoming out before they before they catch. Unfortunately, I, I don't have the dulcifer uh, update page for these available. Otherwise, I'm grabbing. We'll go ahead and use the three by eights. We're just awful close to the. Uh, those eight millimeter rods in the back. And really they're just these are just there to provide lateral. So yeah, the, the nice thing with this printer too, uh, subsector, is with it being all PLA printed, I mean, it's literally a printed 3D printer. And like I said, it's real small. It's great to take to shows. There's the 120 size, which is the standard um, Rook. And then there's a 180 size, which is a mod, so that you can get a little bit bigger. So the 180 would be more of the Prusa mini bed size, where the 120 is like the, uh, the Boron B0. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I'm, I'm surprised that I am, we'll say, up and moving around as, as well as I am today. So yesterday, um, of course, I was supposed to be streaming, and my wife was going to a conference up in Virginia, and she was going to stay at my brother's house and then take the like the light rail up from Fredericksburg into Crystal City. Well, the problem is my 
brother's mother-in-law is moving in and apparently another family friend is moving in. So it's like, okay, well you can have the couch and there's gonna be seven dogs. And I'm like, oh no, I'm, I'm driving you up here. So I spent like 10 hours on the road yesterday. So this is um, a black and gold scheme. The black is Polymaker uh, Sparkle Black, Galaxy Black, Sparkle Black, Poison. Um, right now, I ha this is just a, a little flimsy cover piece to cover up the electronics to keep things from falling on it. And I just need to put some more uh, M5 screws in that. Probably should do that soon before I get too much further. Um, and then there's a hole. So the hole here is where the belt for the belt of Z is going to go. And then on this side is where the, um, oh, what am I hanging out? Um, the ZN stop would mount. And so it catches the middle beam of the bed support as it comes down would trip the end stop. So what I did is this is a, another mod, I, I do believe this is Gulsifer as well, that allows you to run a standard Creality end stop. And so I, the, it sticks, it, it was designed not to have this plate here, so we did have to cut a hole for that plate which is pretty easy, you know, just put a piece of blue painter's tape, figure out where it's going to mount to and where that hole's going to be, mark it, and then a drill and cut. Because this plate is real flimsy. It's like not even three millimeters thick. It's probably about one half millimeter. Yeah, so the gold is the Polymaker metallic, I believe it's PLA Pro metallic. So, yeah, it's, it's a nice color. Apparently, I probably should put this on before. But that's okay. Let's lock this down. Yeah, it, the color scheme did come out really well. I just kind of wish I had um, some black M5 hardware. I mean, I've got some, but it's um, it's not button head screws. And for this bottom plate, I really like to keep the button head screws. And these holes that I'm I'm uh, actually going into. The trying to go into if I can get to go straight up and down. Um, they're, they're basically an M5 through hole. So when we mounted our feet with the M5 16s, that's why I need to go with like a 8 or a 10 at the top, is because they can't, there's not enough for me to run like a big, big screw. Through. Really, I can only run like a Eight and wonder if that's my problem is these eights are actually tapping out against the M5 by 16s on the bottom. I might have to drop the M5 16s to something else. Maybe pop these out and put a 12 in there. Not give me room to put the plate down through the top. This is the joys of, you know, building custom printers is, okay, well, the CAD says this, but now I'm using this mod, so I can't really go with that screw size. I have to go with a different screw size. You know, um, so I've got a couple of printers going. I've got one going right behind me, which is one of my Prusa Bears. Let me bring that up on screen for you. 
So you've got at the top is Purple Haze, and that is running a um, Cinder Wang Rose Dragon in Silk Red by Polymaker. So my, I'm getting ready to go back to Colorado for Rocky Mountain Rep Rep Fest, and my best man, his daughter, actually both of his daughters, one of them wanted a MacGyver dragon, and the other one wanted in gold, which is the one I showed on stream a couple of days ago. And then the other one wanted the um, Cinder Wing Rose Dragon in a deep red. So I got both um, Silk Red and Rose Gold. And I think the Silk Red is actually a darker color, so that's what I'm printing in. Um, and it failed when I was running it the first time because the, the print head took a uh, thermal runaway error. And I couldn't figure out why. The only thing I can think of is it's right up against that wall and there's a vent. Um, the window, well, right up above the window is a vent. And that vent is right in line with those two printers in that corner there. And so I think what happened is it kicked on at night and blew a draft across the Prusa. And because the new Prusa firmware has thermal profiles built in for, um, well, for, for the hot ends, those are based on the E3DV6 hot ends. And I'm running a Revo, and there's known issues with the Revo and those um, thermal profiles. So I think it was triggering um, and stopping the print. So right now, um, I've got, I'm, it's getting hot in here because I'm trying to run that minimally to get rid of any drafts and ensure that that print waits this time. And then the one down at the bottom left, which is um, Mercury Rising, that is printing a Warhammer 40,000 um, Chaplain's helmet. And so this is the main part of the helmet, and it will print for a couple of days. And I am printing that bottom print in the Polymaker Metallic Bronze. So yeah, that one's looking really cool too. It, it looks like a bunch of crop circles right now because that's all the um, organic supports. Yeah, that's going to be a multi-day print there to get that done. Oh yeah, if it, if it's only doing it while it's moving, then that's a that's probably a bad wire. So yeah, um check the thermistor and if the thermistor is ohming well and you've replaced well if you've replaced the the thermistor you should be good from a thermistor perspective if you're if you're still having issues then yeah it's probably the um oh it's probably the the actual heater wire that but i would also say before you futz too much make sure that you've got the latest printer firmware, it may be an issue in firmware that own issue that's been fixed. Yeah, and I was thinking about that too, to, to look at printing a baffle. Um, 
the the other vent in the room is kind of right right in front of this um, workbench to the right some um, so it sits right over my desk so I'm sitting there and not paying attention and all of a sudden the AC kicks on and blows right down on me kind of freaks me out a little bit yeah all I'm doing here is just replacing the screws with a little bit shorter screws so I can run the the deck screws from the top down without any issues and then I'll also like right now I don't have the the rubber feet on but I'll put the rubber feet on as well and those just go in with a short M5 bolt and an M5 nut on the inside and they, they say that they're optional But yeah, this is just a, a slow chill build for me. Um, like I said, I was on the road a lot yesterday, so I'm just kind of. I don't know. I actually slept really, really well yesterday or last night for whatever reason. I don't know why. I'm happy I slept well. And then I was chatting with um, Evil Diesel. She lives like five minutes away, so I need to run over there sometime today and take him a couple of things for his vendor. Because that's the one thing I have spades of is extra Creality parts. So for the late covers, the, the stock um, configuration for a rook would be either the Creality um, board or a uh, SKR Mini E3 V3. And I have decided I'm actually going to go and use the Big Tree Tech uh, SKR Pico board in this with a um, uh, either a Raspberry Pi Zero W, or I also have a Banana Pi M2 on the way. So if that gets in here in the next few days, then it'll go on the printer. If not, I'll probably start out with the Raspberry Pi Zero, and then possibly switch over to the Banana Pi when it comes in, just to, you know, just to check things out and see how different it is as far as performance and everything. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got a, a ton of spare parts from Creality's because like I said, you know, when you, I've got the Ender 5 Plus, I took that apart and rebuilt it as a Mercury um, Zero G. So when you buy the kits from Fabrica to do that conversion, you get all new motors with it. It's part of what comes in the kit. So I've got all the motors from the Ender 5 that are that I have available. And then you know I've replaced the well when I did the Ender wire I used different motors. So that's where I've got the ones with the pressed on pulley still. Like, well, might as well put those to good use and put them on a build. Why not a, a rook? Because I use the the little small uh, five volt unipolar motors for the baby belt, and I'm gonna as part of that build, you switch them from unipolar to bipolar motors to get a little more torque for them, and you know those are the um. I mean, those motors are really, really inexpensive to get your hands on. Um, and you get them with the uh, motor controllers and stuff. So I, I bought a 
couple of them. So I can either build multiple baby belts or I can always use those footers, the driver boards for them for other projects. Depends on I feel like doing that. Here we go. So we've got our base panel all secured down. Um, we've got the frame, for the most part, put together. Um, we still need to mount our motors and need to figure out on the CAD, not necessarily the CAD, but the Come over here and looking at the book, oh, that's very helpful. Show which side is which. So what I'm going to do is pop in here and see if it shows me which side. Actually, or golf building his actual setup. Take a quick gander at this. Rook motor mounts. Which what you need. In which direction. You need three of these. Two Nemo 17 motors that are the same. Doesn't matter. The same size. You need. I guess if I actually put M3 the, uh, 8 by 12. Uh, uh, M3 in a way, tell 8s. Me. 12 of them. With washers. And the reason why you need washers hey, yeah. is so these Not don't sure. pull Can all the way through. That? Because I can't. Like this gear sits speakers, like this. This one sits upside down, here. as you can see here. And the reason why. is because this is the Gulsifer speed mod. It also allows your carriage to lay flat yeah. when homing. And you can find this specific setup on printables. This other motor down here also gets a gear and also washers. Rook motor mounts, what you need. You need three of these. Two Nemo 17 motors that are the same, doesn't matter, the same size. You need yeah. M3 8 by 12, uh, tw uh, M3 8s, 12 of them, with washers. And the reason why you need washers is so these don't pull all the way through. This gear sits like this. This one sits upside down. 
as you can see here. And the reason why... Okay, so M3A with washers. Okay, to mount the motors. We will go ahead and... Go ahead and get these mounted. I still did not see in which direction the motors would go, but like I said, mounting the gantry will tell me that. As long as I can you know, determine which way the gantry mount goes, it will go like this. That will be able to tell me which motor goes where. Do have a slight bit of cleanup on these. Let me do that real fast. So when you print um, this one piece gantry, you have no choice but to use supports for it. And so I'm just going to try and get all of the extra support material out of the holes so that I this. Everything. Right, bit out. Pretty good. But the M3 holes are pretty cruddy. So what we're going to do is just run this through to clean up these holes some. Sure, we stay round. This is an M5 reamer, so I'm not enlarging the hole. Not making the holes larger, I'm just cleaning them up to make it easier to get the screws in. Probably put you on mute real fast while I run this so I don't burn your ears out.
Oh, hey, subsector. Um, you weren't on earlier when I opened these up. So we got some new filament. So we got the Koo Beans um, PLA Silk. This is green and blue. So it is co extrusion. So blue on one side, green on the other. That is a silk. So I think we're going to wind up doing some dragons or maybe a um, uh, something from Flexi Factory. And then my sister from another mister, Westry, sent me the Xyltech. This is metallic blue. And this is this is beautiful. I, I love blue, so yes, I, I love blue. That's why um the last printer we did, Blue Dragon, was in the um KVP um like a sparkle blue. Um and I I'm just a big blue person, so love blue. Okay, so what we wanted to do was this is the back, this is the front, so our gantry is going to mount like this. And it's going to mount with the M3 by 8s, I believe they were. Grab a few of those. I think it was saying M3 by 8s for those motors as well with washers. I need to order some more M3 by 8s. I'm almost out. I might have to switch over to using some button heads for some things. And if I remember right, I need to use this one because it is a um, small hole to get. The clearance to get the hex driver down there, for whatever reason, my new drivers don't have the clearance to get through it easily. Or it just could be that I was using um, carbon fiber PET G for the last prints. So let's see, maybe I'm through there. Good news, my hexes get down there. Bad news, the way the drill, I need to get the free drill. So, let's see, I'm going to Oh, the hot red red from Xyltech? Yeah, I'm waiting to see the Iron Man print that somebody's going to do with the hot rod red. That she just got in. Because the shield is coming out fabulous. Get you all real fast.
So I am just running these down there initially. I'm not tightening them down. I'm going to keep them just a little bit loose until we start getting, until we have all of them in, basically. The way we ensure that everything is lined up about as straight and solid as we can get it. Because once again, our, our Y rails are not locked in yet. We wanted to keep those loose for the time being until we get the whole XY set up um, connected. And then we will start going through and tightening everything down so that we can keep our initial Uh, get the get the gantry unracked initially, and once we start doing the belts, we'll have to keep an eye on it and make sure that we don't rack it doing the belt. Of course, I'm going through and doing, you know, putting this on the things without having done the idlers yet. So you're going to make doing the idlers fun. So the, the thing is, is you can either do the idlers on the gantry first and then put the gantry and mount it. Or you can do it the opposite direction. Either way, you're going to have some some issues just trying to get these screws in and started around the actual idlers. So what I've decided to do is I would get them started and roll these to the front, one, front or back, either way. I'm gonna push it all the way to the back and I'm gonna tighten up this gantry. And then I'll do the other side same way. I'm going to push it all the way to the back, tighten up that gantry. And then I'm going to lay it down on its side and start working the, the idlers. And then once I get the idlers in, then I'll go ahead and put the oh, Sorry about that. Once I get the idlers in, um, then I'll go ahead and put the metal rail onto the printer. So what I just did was I got them loose and then I pushed them all the way back and I tightened the three screws down so that the X and Y are now joined. And this, right now, the Ys are still free-floating a bit, and I want to do that. What I will do is I'll lock down the ends on one side and then slowly work it back and forth and lock down all the other screws based off that one end. And that way, that will give me, um, that will allow the, the rails themselves to actually lock in. But right now there's a little bit of flex in this piece. So I wanna get the others on and then I'll put the other rail on which will stiffen this up considerably. And then as I move it back and forth, it's basically going to auto align, make the other two rails parallel to it. So. Which two nuts did you find, Westry? The the ones that went with the screws that you were had loose?
vendor stacks here. These are M5s once again. So size though. Five. M5 is by 25. Let's see four of these. Coming back over to our washers. Toss a couple of those out there because we may wind up with some tight washers again. And we've got one, two, three, four bearing stacks, so we need eight of the branch bearings. So standard bearing stack would be bolt, washer, or shim. I don't have the, I have precision shims around here somewhere. I just cannot locate them. Um, so bear with me. So we have the bolt, the washer, and I'm gonna have to slide this off the front or prop the back up one of the two. I see it set flat. So. Lose my stuff here. Got the washer. We're going to put flange bearing. And once again, on the washers, we always put the, um, say, the pretty side towards the printed part. And then the nice side against the actual bearing. Put the other bearing in, and then we will need to gently and gently slide washer in. Once again, with the bird side to the printed part. All right, I know this is off, off the screen or the video. Once I get this one on, put a uh, box up, move it back on, so you can see me futz and fiddle with it. Trying to wedge this one in. I think it did. And then these were, are just threading into the printed part below. So once again, don't break down on them too much. You just you want them to roll, spin freely, and you just want them to be just tight. Now because you're putting this down in there, so you're 
just getting into it, you're not bottoming it out. You're going to put in your bolt washer with the burr side against the plastic. Then flange side bearing to the washer. Opposite direction for the second bearing. You will need another washer with the first side with the printed spacer there. And there we go. It's going to tighten these. And I believe I have messed myself up because I I ran the five mil through this side versus the top. So I have now made these all five mil and they shouldn't be because I needed to thread the um, I needed to thread the stuff into them. So I am now at a stopping point because I'm gonna to have to reprint this gantry piece. Darn it. So with that being said, here's a question for everybody that's still with me. Um, should I reprint this gantry piece in gold the way it currently is? Or should I reprint the X gantry in the black? Because I can go either way. But as noted right now, I'm going to have to reprint that part before I can continue with the build because I, I screwed that up. Too, too far when I was trying to do Yes, like I said, we can go gold and we can keep it as gold, or we can go ahead and do it as black and add a little bit more contrast to this top hat part. Because the, the rookery, which is the actual hot end, is gold as well. So we can go ahead and switch that, or switch this, right here over to the galaxy black and that will still keep with the black and gold okay go ahead and print it in the black I can do that I can do that if you give me just a second, do I have that's the Galaxy Dark Blue? I think the Galaxy Dark Black is downstairs. I'd have to go get that to print this piece, and it was originally done on the Mercury, so. I'll have to re-slice it and I can run it on slice it, run it on Red Dragon here right behind us. We'll go ahead and put the motors on and do a few other things that we can do while we're while we're here and while we've got time. Or at least some of us have time. I'm bachelor. I am a bachelor at the moment, so 
I've got time. So give me a second and I will run down and grab that spool and then we'll start working on getting that print going on Red Dragon. Okay? Be right back. I'm going to go on mute for just a second. Okay, back up and run. <coughs> Push the slicer. My stuff is ready to go real fast. Me. Once again, I'm not running speed. I'm running. Hey, yeah, I've got a good part.
bring them up to temp. Just some filament. Then we'll put in the other filament. We'll get that started and then we'll come back over here. Um, and based on gantry, This side's low, this side's high. So, low on this side, high on that side. We'll have to check and see if they actually match up as far as height-wise goes. If they do, great. If they don't, then between now and the next stream, I'll get other motors or I'll pop these off, grind some flax, and we'll put standard um, pulleys on them. Figured I'd give a shot and see if I can't reuse some of the ones I already have. I love my Revos and the ceramic heaters. They heat up so, so incredible. <laughs> Need to grab my intro washers. The other nice thing about a Revo, or not a Revo, but a Foron, flip that lever, it releases the frame, and your filament's out. in there, push the lever over, touch the top, and boom, you're down in there. Boom. And we'll tell it to load filament. Start running filament through and spinning it out. The second time, just make sure we had all the dark blue out. All right. Now we got that started. Thank you, Westry, for the choice of colors. I 
Okay, subsector, not a problem. Not a problem. I get the need to adjust the uh, confines of the office occasionally. If I remember right, I heard it say M3 by 8 with washers. So. I don't know, M3 by 8 doesn't leave much, and then you add washers. I think I'm going to go with M3 by 10s. I'm going to turn them so that the, um, I'm going to turn the motors so that the connectors are facing the inside, and that way it shouldn't allow me to create a single umbilical right down the back of the printer. Tens are going to work well. Wish I had some black washers, but I don't because that would be full and keep steam. But it is what it is. And you do have the ability to move these motors forward and back. But once I get these started and they're just kind of, motors just kind of chilling out. We'll move it to the forward most point. And then that way, when I put the belts on, I can use the, you know, loosen these up and just pull the motor back to tighten the belt. Red Dragon's going around behind me and just doing its multi-point bed level. Just finished. So I have my printer set up to do a mesh for every print, not you know, do a, a mesh and then recall it. That way I can ensure that it's getting a good mesh and a good first layer every time. And the hard part is printing black on black. So it's just making sure that that first layer is going to well, it should because I have the Galaxy Dark Blue on there. And this is Galaxy Black. It might as well be the exact same thing. Feels a tiny bit too smushed, but I'm going to go with it because it's a textured bed. I'd much rather it stick and have to uh, you know, use my deburring tool to clean off a little bit of the edge than uh, have it not stick and pop up mid print. So. Like I said, we're going to go ahead and try and mount these motors, and, and we'll see if they line up well. If they do, fantastic. If they don't, then I will do the, the needed thing and find other motors or pop these pulleys off and pull the, uh, pull the pulleys and grind flat spots in them off stream. 
I don't think you want to be on stream watching me trying to flat spot in the motor. <gasps> Westry got a chicken chew bone. And she, I'm sorry, not Westry. Mia got a chicken chew bone and she's being good. I mean, she's always being good, Westry. I'm glad that she's being good in the car, though, because having had dogs and cats in the past, when they're when they're not like in the car, it, it's it makes it another level of hell. The motors are there, they can be slid front to back. But we can tighten them. They are clearing the, the connectors, so that's good. So we're doing good there. And once again, this should be the high one. This should be the low one based on the outer. Um, actually, let me think. Let me think through that. Real quick. High one towards the low. Having a hard time like thinking belt routing right now. Coffee shop was closed. Holy crap! Like that's that's a rideable offense right there. Yeah, you, you didn't miss too much, um, Mr. Rick. So we've got the the base built with our feet. We did go and change most of the bolts out for smaller bolts so that we can get the bolts in from the top to give us a pretty little cover plate to keep our electronics safe. Um, we got um, the bed mount or the uh, bed carriage mounted and we decided to go with um, I'll spit it out here a second. Dang. Oh, decided to go with the Delrin uh, Igus bearings because all of my regular LM8 EU bearings were chunky and crappy. And I even tried uh, re uh, greasing them and they were still chunky and crappy. So I was like, no, I'm just going to put the Delrins in. So we got the Delrin bearings in and they will break in even more over time. Uh, we need to still work on getting the belt mounted. And we've got the top on the why rails are a little loose still. Um, they will get put into place more once I have the uh, X, XY joints and the X carriage put on. And that's where we had to make a, a change of plans because when I went to put this on, I was like, man, let me clean up these holes. So I needed to just deburr from the top down, not drill all the way through because these M5s that hold the bearings um, actually thread into the bottom plastic. And I think I came in from this side when I deburred, and so there's nothing there for the bolts to actually hold on to. So we are currently reprinting this part over on um, Red Dragon, which is our switch wire here. And we're printing it. We decided we're going to print it in black versus the gold so that the 
the XY gantry here will be black. And then our tool head, which is going to be the rookery, will be gold as well. So that'll still give us our red gold contrast colors. Um, that's kind of where we're at. I, until I can get this reprinted so we can put the linear rail on this and get the idlers back on and get it built up and on here, I can't do the belt carrier for the rook. Um, I am hoping that the Creality motors line up sufficiently so that we, you know, that they're lining up with the right belt pass. If so, fabulous. If not, then I will have to source some different motors and get some different motors going. Um, we will also need to, and we can possibly do some of this now where we go ahead and mount our adapter plate for our electronics, and that will allow us to lay out our um, SKR Big Tree Tech Pico board and get our motor in place here to see if we're going to have any clearance issues on the uh, the motor for the belt for the Z. Go ahead and get that. Man, this makes this this makes me reminisce over doing the uh, the Voron V Zero. I can't tell you how many times I had that up on a box just like this as I was working on it. Slide these forward. And see if we can get those off. Yeah, let's can't get the. Well, we'll do like that. So I think these are just meant to be M3s that'll self tap. So I will double check if these are M3s or these might even be the self tapping type. This is our bomb calling for. by 16 island towers in mounting heck would you use let me just rephrase that there's no way I'm using an M3 by 16 to mount that that is ludicrous 16 would put it standing proud of this frame because this is sunk under so we'll use Huh, a lot of them three by tens. So maybe let's look at them three by tens. And actually, I'm going to sit that there and see if tens would even work or a thin. Pins may be too big. That's why I'm going to try and check them all first. Problem is, I'm almost out of them three by eight. So if tens are too much. Tension work. Then should work. Right, I can get it to actually start into the state.
then we're also going to put our rubber feet on this. That'll give it a little bit more stability, especially on a flat surface like the bench it's on right now. Keep it from sliding all over the place. A little place closed on Sundays. Well, I mean, she's, she's, bless her, she's got to work off some of that little energy. I mean, little dogs have a ton of energy. My brother's got, um, I think they're Maltese or something like that. And they just, like, every night, and it's right about the same time, all of a sudden they get the, what he refers to as the zoomies. And they just start rolling through the house, like, like they've lost their ever-loving minds chasing each other around the house. Quite funny and cute to watch, but... Will a BL Touch fit on this? Um, I don't know. And quite honestly, I don't know what the value of BL Touch would bring. And I say that because... I'm going to set this on the side so I can get a better filter. Um, I say that because it's a 120 millimeter bed. Um, now, would it be better to have something like a BL Touch or would it be better to have something like, uh, you know, if you can mount a side swipe like you would on a, uh, on a V0? That might be worth it. I'm sure somebody's got some type of mod out there to do something like that. The zoomies! It was an M3 by 10 screw. How come it felt like it was an M3 by, you know, negative Z China, you know? Just noticed. This one, or whatever, did not work. So I'll go back and read it. couple of these, you're just cutting thread so much, it's like you have to keep backing it in and out like you were doing, uh, you know, like you were actually cutting threads on a piece of aluminum or something. They're chips or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, this is a tiny, tiny printer. And the default bed on this is the 120, so it's the same size as the Boron V0 as far as the bed size, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order a Boron V0 bed so that we'll have the bed mount and, you know, a heated bed and all that good stuff. I mean, the cheapest way to go would be just to, to get a piece of glass or, yeah, like a piece piece of glass and do a mounted piece of glass and just not run a heater. But for what I've got and the electronics I've got in it and everything, because I'm going to be running the Pico, I might as well just put a bed heater on it. You shouldn't have any issues with the bed mount itself being PLA because it will sit up on the springs and sit proud of it. So we shouldn't have any problems with that. But yeah, I mean, that is 
that's the scale of it right there, a, a spool of filament. It's just like the B0. When you put a spool of filament next to the B0, it, it just dwarfs the printer. Especially if you get a three kilogram roll. Um, ah, we gotta finish putting the screws in to the mount here. Two more to do. And then, like I said, the I've got the SKR Pico, and I've got a Raspberry Pi um, 0W. This is what I originally had in my Prusa Mark III's over, over here. Um, all three of my Prusa Mark III's are now rocking the um, 0W2's mounted into their INC boards. So I pulled the ones out and they're sitting over here in a box. So I've got a couple that I can put on other printers. And really a printer this size doesn't need a Raspberry Pi 3B or a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, if you're gonna do input shaper on it, you really can't do input shaper on, a, uh, on the original uh, Raspberry Pi 0 or 0W. Zero uh, it just doesn't have the, the processing oomph. But what I had done, uh, not yesterday, on Friday, um, Friday evening, I went ahead and converted my, um, my input shaper. So I've got the ADXL, and I originally just had it as a pigtail. Right, it was pigtailed right here with two uh, one by four connectors that you could plug into your Raspberry Pis. Well, the problem with that is you have to make sure you get it in the right Raspberry Pi GPIO pins, or you have issues. Um, you also have to have access to Raspberry Pi. So, on a lot of the printers, like the Switchwire, the Raspberry Pi. You know, you've got deck panels on the top and a full panel on the bottom to create that wind tunnel for the cooling. So you have no way of actually accessing the Raspberry Pi. So what I've done on my switch wires is I added a male to female extension cable that just hangs out in front. And you can connect your ADXL into a, a Raspberry Pi Pico. And these are soldered directly onto the Pico board. And then you can use your USB A to, is that the micro USB connector? Hey, OC to craft, how's it going? And then it becomes a simple fact of plug it in, uncomment a line in your, um, and your configuration file to enable the input shaper, restart your, your clipper firmware, and now you're up, you do a home, and then you can run your input shaper. And then when you're done, you uncomment that line out again, because as soon as you disconnect it, if it can't talk to this MCU, it's, it's, going, to, it's going to shut down your printer anyhow. So yeah, this is the ADXL with Pico. So I just input to input shaper tuned the Mercury Rising, which is down here in the bottom left on the screen. Um, it's currently printing a Warhammer 40,000 Chaplin helmet in Polymaker metallic bronze. But the nice thing about doing that is your input shaper configuration calls the GPIO pens of the Raspberry Pi Pico, and it's just a separate MCU. Because on Red Dragon, I'm using a Manta M4P with a CB1 module, and Mercury Rising is a Manta M8P with a CB1 module. 
And they do have the 40 pin IO connectors, but they're different named pins. I believe the pins are the same except for one, but they have different names in when you're using Clipper. So you would have to go through and figure out all the right pin names and hopefully you got them right. So that's where using the USB is just so much easier because it's seen as a separate MCU when it needs to be there. When it's not, you just uncomment that line in the in your uh, printer.cfg file and you roll about your business. Um, yeah. Um, let me go grab that Pico board real fast out of the closet. So I believe, I don't know, I might be able to get there. Be right back. What? This is not even in the closet. I've been playing, but originally I had, um, I have gone and put Clipper on this board and I created a, a printer.config file because I was thinking about um, putting it on the um, words. I was going to put it on the B01 and recover the SKR Mini E3 V3 off of that and the larger Raspberry Pi. And I decided, yeah, no, because I didn't, like I said, that V01 is printing so well. I haven't had to touch the bed level since before Christmas. And, you know, like Acetocraft, I, I just printed a bunch of parts for him for a, um, a bore on afterburner tool head. And all I did was take off the, the one color, put on the colors he wanted, and, and hit print. And it goes. And I don't have to, I don't really have to muck with it or tweak it or tune it or anything. It just prints great. So. Exactly, exactly. It, um, the, the thing that you got to be careful of is getting the right ADXL because some of them have, I'll say, flowback circuit protection. So some of the ADXLs will only work on 3.3 volt. Some will only work on 5 volt. And some you can go back and forth. So the one that I got is actually the ADXL the 3541, whatever. Um, it's the um, Adafruit one. Yeah. So it's. Yeah, that's not good. I could probably post a picture. But this is the. ADXL 345 digital accelerometer. It's the Adafruit one. And it's got all the right voltage protections on it. The only thing that's really weird is finding the, the right mount for your board and the printer that you're trying to install it on. It seems like all the boards, the whole pattern is slightly different which is just infuriating because you need your ADXL board to be very snug on the printer um, when you're doing your input shaping. Otherwise, it'll skew your results. This one feels like it's not straight and all the way down there either. So. Yeah, but $10 for both the Pico. I mean, I bought, when I bought my um, Raspberry Pi Picos, I think I bought like four or five at the same time because I knew I was going to use them for different projects. So I was just like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get a bunch of them. Why, why pay shipping and, and uh, you know, wait multiple times to get it in? So I just went ahead and bought few of them in bulk.
So we got that done, we got that done. We're gonna stick the electronics on the bottom. Got the Pico here. And this board, it's just the cutest little board. Like I said, all your connectors pretty much are on the sides, all the main connectors that you need. Um, I think these may be PWM fans and a couple other things, but everything is pretty much right along the outer edge. And that's why I wanted to see, you know, did it mount like this or like this? Because if it mounts like this, then we may have Okay, so it mounts sideways. Our motor drivers and motors are on this side. Power coming in here. Raspberry Pi right there. I think we'd be better off to turn it 180. I put some motors over here, and this would be probably thermistors and stuff. I really ought to pull up the diagram. And give, give me a second, Chewy. You, you, I'm assuming you sent that over to me on Discord. Okay, yeah, if it says three to five volt, then that should be good. Um, yeah. And the difference is, is you should have a, a VN pin, which will accept whichever voltage you send to it, 3.3 or 5. And then right next to it would be like a 3V3, so a 3.3 volt. Right, so if you go into the VN and it's a 3 to 5 volt, you should be good either way. Exactly. I mean, I, went, I was at Micro Center yesterday, and had they had any Raspberry Pis, I would have picked one up. Regardless of what, you know, if it was a 3B, a 4, uh, the only thing they had was they had one compute module 4, I think. And I didn't even look at, at it because the cost is stupid crazy on the cm4 modules now um i don't know why they've always been more expensive than standard pi i think because you can get more ram options on it and the uh, emcc got this we got that i needed to also pull up a Does anybody else have issues with um, Discord, especially on a Mac, where you try and bring it up and it just kind of sits there and spins and spins and spins and spins and spins, and then as soon as you shut it down and then bring it back up, it like immediately pops up? Well, that's been kind of annoying the heck out of me.
what I was trying to do is bring out the pin out on the SKR Pico. So I can try and see what's what's what. So we would have the motors now towards the front of the printer and the back would be the bed thermistor, the quite in thermistor, X, Y, Z, N stop. RGB and in stop zero would be coming from the top. Then we put our power hotbed in. Motors off the side, then on this side would be fans and the connector to go over. Okay. So yeah, looking at the way the board is set up, clean up just a bit. So the way the board is set up, putting it in this orientation, the stepper motors are on this front face. The power, bed, and hot end connectors are on the, what would be the right side of the printer. We would have the stepper motor for the, um, the Z-axis, and then we'd have the Hot end thermistor, the bed thermistor, bed hot end X, Y, Z end stops, RGB lights, filament run up sensor, and then over here we would have three fans and the connector to provide power over to the Raspberry. Um, yeah, I'm on the latest. I want to say I'm on 13 to 1. Yeah, I'm on 13 to 1 Ventura. And I know what it's trying to do. It's trying to, to do updates or check for updates, but it just seems to hang for whatever reason. And I, and I don't get it. Yeah, 10 to 15 bucks for CityCraft, that's still not that much. And yeah, the, I am four and a half to five hours away from the nearest micro center. It's in Fairfax, Virginia, and I live down in the Raleigh, North Carolina area. So yesterday when I drove my wife up to Crystal City, Virginia for a conference, um, I went out and stopped at Micro Center on the way back and got some 4010 blower fans for my rookery. Um, so we may start and put some of that together as well before we end the stream today. But normally I go to Micro Center once a year to do, um, you know, get upgrades for my computers. And I'll look at the printer stuff. I, I looked at some of the streaming stuff and checked out what cameras they had. And they didn't really have any of the cameras I'd be interested in. I'm thinking about getting another Brio 4K, which is this main, and mount it on the ceiling to do an overhead shot. Um, thank you, Zombie Hedgehog, for giving me that so that I can spend more money. Enhance my streaming capabilities to if their fullest potential. Um, my wife will remember you. Um, but yeah, it, it's 
a cheap soldering iron will work for the heat sets. Like, I've got a cheap, cheap soldering iron from Radio Shack. And the only reason I don't use it is because this darn thing is so useful. It's the, uh, uh, the TS-100. Um, TS-100. And the nice thing is, is it, it's got a standard, I'll say standard style power brick like you would have for a, for a monitor or a laptop or the brick separate. But you can also run it off of LiPo batteries and um, oh, it, you know, any, anything that you can use a barrel connector to provide the power for. And it heats up real quick. So I've been using this for everything. The only diff, the only thing it stinks is there's no heat, you know, special heat set insert tip. So that's why I go down like 95% of the way, stop, and then push it up against the metal edge of my um, workbench because that'll make sure it gets flat to the surface and also taking what is a hot object and putting it on a larger piece of metal will help dissipate the heat out of it a little bit faster the heat set that is so it'll it'll cool a little bit quicker but yeah i use this for soldering and doing heat sets now if you have a cheapo that you could uh, undo and replace the, the tip in then yeah i would grab a set of heat sets and one of the set tools Preferably from KB3D or West3D or, you know, pick your favorite supplier. I mean, you can get them off of Amazon. I haven't looked to see what the quality is like on the ones that are on Amazon. Um, so... But yeah. So I think that is how we're going to mount that. Um, I do want to use button heads for that. So I will get into this stash over here. And buys my extra reality in stops. Sorry, that was probably a long while. And these don't require a ton of. Uh, Space and set. Yeah, those will be set for you. Every once in a while, I try and use some of the two and a half um, by six millimeters just because I got, you know, you have to get those with the Boron V0 for mounting the MGN7 rails. Um, so you get a whole pack of them, and then it's like, well, now what do I use them for other than mounting that one rail? Two and a half would all come in easier to circuit boards.
Now, I did um, help somebody else spend money at Micro Center when I was here yesterday. Um, I had, there was a, a kid and his mother looking for a uh, printer or looking at the, the 3D printers. And we did wind up talking about 3D printers and I may have suggested a printer for him. And while we were sitting there, his mom actually bought it and said, now, can I, can I write this off as a business expense? If I, you know, I was like, well, I guess print something for your business. And she goes, well, what would you print for my business? I was like, do you need any desk organizers? Like I'm sitting here now, you know, she made that comment and I'm like, huh. I wonder if I can start counting this stuff as business expense. Brent, I'm going, I'd be taking an annual loss, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know what? I leave my TS-100 at the basic, so it's, when you turn it on, it goes to 300, and I normally leave it at that. Now, if you're going to be trying to put heat sets into, um, like, PLA, 300 is going to be way too hot, so you want to drop that down just to make it easier. Good God, these are M3 by 6s. I wish they were, like, M3 by 2s. Like bruising my finger here, trying to screw these things into the plastic. Yeah, and, and I'm a, an affiliate with Twitch, and I have an affiliate account with Amazon. So if you use any of the links on my YouTube channel or my Twitch channel, like down on the PC section that shows what my PC is and the, um, my stream equipment, if you happen to use any of those, I'll get a few cents back. Um, I have no idea what, what that actually equates to because nobody's bought anything yet. So... Um, so the heat sets that you will use, I'm assuming you're asking for the Voron Acetocraft. They're the M3 by 5 by 4 um, heat sets. Um, hello, guys. So yeah, the little guy here. M3s, and, and I have yet to go out and get like M5s or any of the other sizes or any other printer builds. I mean, I could potentially have gotten M5s and sunk M5s into, this, into the base to mount everything up with, but I mean, threading into plastic is fine. Big of a deal. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you're looking at the one that's got the M3s and has the tool with it, so a lot of times you can find packages and they'll specifically call out like Boron or I love the Physetic Born. Um, and they will have um, M3 by 5 inserts and, you know, the, the stepped tool that will work for like an M3 or an M4 or M5, various sizes. Um, just a case, okay.
And if you get any of these cables, keep them. They're gold. They're gold. These little ex extension cables. Um, they're gold. Same thing with the, um, like, there's another one in this kit here. It's the, um, it's the, was it the micro USB to USB dongle or USB connector? So, once again, what that'll allow you to do is run your zero, plug in your Pico to do input shaping. And then pop that out. Oh yeah, I've, I've got a bunch of them from all the printers hanging up on the on the pegboard over there. So now what I don't have on this is I don't have any header pins soldered on. And if I solder on the header pins rather than having to run separate power to this, I can use this connector, which will provide power. And I like the way that it does it because it's both 5 volt powers, ground, and then your transmit receive. And I used to hook my Raspberry Pis up just using the one power connector. And occasionally I would get the, the dreaded under voltage. And as soon as I plugged in both the both of the GPIO pen powers. I've never had um, any issues with the um, under voltage. So, what I will need to do is solder up a, uh, a set of GPIO pens for this, or at least the ones that I will need to run, you know, use the, the Pico um, power and your connection, which that'll plug in right here. Right? And then I'll mount this probably in this orientation because I won't need the HDMI. And even if the HDMI ports were pointed this way, I couldn't use them. So I'll put it in this orientation. This would then mount like such. And I can leave this hanging off the side that I can connect, or, or actually I'll just connect it whenever I need to run input shaping. So really all I need is the first five pins on the outer edge are the only ones I really need added. And then I can uh, then I can just run the Pico right off the or run the high zero off the Pico. And like I said, if I get the banana pie, I can potentially run the banana pie the same way. I just need to double check the pinouts and make sure that the pinouts are the same. So, and I will not mount this yet because I will have to, like I said, solder on the connectors and I'm not going to do that on stream because I, I don't want to be embarrassed with my soldering skills. Um, well, the other thing that we can do now then Is chit chat because that print's going to take a few hours. Once again, I'm not cranking the speeds way. So, Cedarcraft, I have a Shapeoko 3XL which gives me a 16 inch deep by 32 inch wide cutting area. So I can cut the deck panels and the bottom panels 
for the uh, boron switch wire. And by bottom panel, I'm, I'm talking about deck panels and then the bottom panel. The back panels and stuff, um, I'm not sure if the, if the back panel kits for switch wire are three millimeter ABS, or if most of them are coming in, you know, like a black acrylic for those, you know, the, the back sides, the back and the top um, over the back half are normally black of some color or some material, whether it's ACM panels or um, acrylic or ABS, I don't know. Um, but as far as the, the clear acrylic for the front, I have not cut any acrylic on my Shapeoko yet. Um, it should be just as easy as cutting um, ABS, which is really easy with a, a zero flute, aka okay, single flute uh, end mill cutter. So it is something I'm looking at potentially doing. Um, but right now I don't have a need to do an enclosure for either of my switch wires. Because I have my wham bam pop up enclosure, and I can just put that over the Ender 3, which is already set to run uh, ABS. Or if I wanted to, that same thing will fit on any of the uh, Prusas or the switch wire. So, really, building the enclosure is just to me going to add weight. And if I'm printing PLA the majority of the time, the doors are going to be open anyhow. So I don't necessarily see the advantage just yet. And really, my, my primary high temp printer is the V0. Very few things that I need to print, I, do I have to print on something other than the V0, in which case it goes on the Ender, the OG Ender 3. And, uh, but now that we saw the, oh, what was that mod that we were discussing? The F Gen, was it? Oh, the Thomas F Gen, uh, Ender 3 mod, which is basically what we were talking about anyhow, which was using the Ultra Waffles Y, just the Y axis stuff. And then everything else being uh, Dark Dog V2. I'm like, that was, that was awesome. It, yeah, exactly. And, you know, there are services. Oh, excuse me. Like Sin Cut Sin that you can um, cut panels out. Like I said, you know, by all means, use, use your laser and cut the, uh, the acrylic, but please do not ever run a laser on ABS. You're, that, that's definitely bad juju. Um, but yeah, folks, I think that's it for where I'm at on the stream right now. Um, I need to do some soldering so I can even get this installed. I need to check the fitment of a couple of motors and make sure that like if I put this motor here, I should still have the ability to plug everything in. So I've got a good fingers width. So I should be able to get everything plugged in and routed nicely behind that motor, so no problem there. I can go ahead and probably mount this motor. Um, and I need to work on the belt drive and look up really how to do the belt. Um, just to make sure I understand how to do the belt and that I don't have to disassemble half the printer to put that in place now that I've got everything together. Because that would suck. Um, and as you can see, yeah, I'm starting to, I'm starting to wear down now. Um, yesterday, only oh, 4 o'clock. Um, so yeah, with that, I'm going to go ahead and call it quits today, guys. 
Um, I would have really liked to have had this mechanically buttoned down. And I think if I had a couple of things thought through before the stream, um, we would have, and we would have been real close to, you know, having everything put on, belts run, and then I was going to be at a stopping point anyhow because I ordered a, um, a Revo CR. The standard um, Mark, let's say Mark III, not Mark III. The, so the standard um, reality heat block will not fit on the rookery. If I was just putting it straight on there, then yeah, it would, but I decided I wanted to do the rookery for better parts cooling with a 4010 lower on each side and a 4010 in the front for hot end cooling. But um, what I did was I ordered a Revo CR um, from E3D, and I have no idea how long it's going to take to get here. I may wind up ordering another one and fast tracking it, or at the very least, ordering the heat sink for one and just waiting for the other parts to come in. I, I don't know, I'll, I'll do something. I just know the other heat block wouldn't work on getting in. So I have a Revo coming in, um, but yeah, that's where we're at. Thank you all for joining me. My plan right now is to stream Tuesday night. If that plan changes between now and tomorrow, I will let you know. Um, and if so, then we'll, we'll push it to Thursday stream. Excuse me. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to think of that. But yeah, for now I'm done. Um, we will come back on Tuesday or Thursday if we wind up pushing, and we will get the rest of this assembled and get her going, okay? Thank you guys so much for coming out and hanging out with me for as long as we took today. And um, let's see if there's somebody that we can raid into. There's somebody should be streaming. What all do we have here? Three Heathen, Douglas, Factor, Astro Cooper, there's probably doing the multiple structure. How do you guys feel about raining over to Three Heathen? Does that work for everybody? Yeah, it should be fairly quick. I just don't know if it's going to be here, like, you know, before Tuesday. Because I haven't even got ship notification for it yet. Or at least I don't think I have, because I don't think I looked at much email yesterday. So I'll, I'll check. And if it doesn't, if it's not going to get here in time, then we can either go ahead and assemble everything we can while we wait on the tool head, and then move on to something else and come back when the tool head gets here, or what have you. We'll, we'll, we'll keep working on it though. So thanks. Thanks to see the crafty. Yeah, I'll get some rest. I'll probably hang on free heathen a little bit once we get in there, but okay. Yeah, there we go. And with that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the raid started out. Thanks a lot. Join me. Well, it would help if I spelled raid right. So I'm going to go ahead and get the raid started. Everybody, thanks for being here. Thank you for everything you do to support me and all the conversations that we have on stream. Go with me on over to Free Heathen. Let's show him some of the same love that you showed me. And let's raid in, make some noise. Uh, 
and we will see you all again on Tuesday. Thanks much, and have a good day. Enjoy your weekend.